What's going on, everybody? Drone on here with you. It is the NCAA Men's Hockey Championship. It's a Saturday night, April 8th, 2023. How's everybody doing out there today? Let's get into the starting lineups. So for Quinnipiac, head coach by Ram Pecknold per usual. Let's just give you the first line of the defense to the goalies all the way across. So Sam Lipkin, Jacob Quillian, Colin Graff, Desi Berger, Scala Brendamore, Ethan DeYoung. Christophe Filion, Victor Checklier, Christophe Tellier, Michael Lombardi, TJ Frieden, and Joey Cipollone. It's Jake Johnson and Zach Metz on the first line defense with Jaden Lee and CJ McGee, Avari Rasmussen, and Jacob Norquist. Charles Alexis Lego will be the extra D man, and Yana Pretz will be the goalie per usual for the Quinnipiac Bobcats. And for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, it sounds like this Matthew Nyes, Logan Cooley, Jimmy Snuggerud. Mason Nevers, Jackson Nelson, Bryce Brodzinski, Red Pitlick, Aaron Huglin, Brody Lamb, Garrett Pialemi, John Middlestad, and Connor Kurth. On defense, it'll be Ryan Johnson, Brock Faber, Mike Coster, Jackson Lacombe, Kel Thomas, and Ryan Chesley. Luke Middlestad will be the extra D-man. And of note, he scored a couple goals in that previous game against the Boston University Terriers. Justin Close will be the goaltender for the Golden Gophers, head coach by Bob Motzko. So let's just give you a little bit of the preamble as far as everything else. We've given you the lineups for both teams. Quinnipiac is 33-4-3 on the season. And again, this was from College Hockey Inc. As we talked about the hottest team in the field. They've won 18 of 21 games since Christmas. They've won every game on the tournament side. When you have Yana Peretz, now 33 wins, 10 shutouts in a season, and a 932 save percentage as we talked about. Last year was even more wins and a 950 save percentage alongside 14 shutouts. So in that sense, if I'm doing the math correctly, I believe it was 12 shutouts last year, 10 this year, 22 in the last two years for the sophomore. Again, they won 5-0 against Merrimack, 4-1 against Ohio State, and 5-2 against Michigan in the Frozen Four. And for the Minnesota Golden Gophers, 29-9-1, the number one overall seed in the tournament. Gophers have been excellent, and take note, Quinnipiac Bobcats, in the sense of it. Boston Terriers committed too many penalties. They gave up seven. Minnesota scored three. It was a pair of goals in the end, and the empty net for Logan Cooley, the Arizona Coyotes prospect, and a 6-2 win against the Terriers, three for seven on the power play, as we said. And the Gophers are 23-0-0 when leading after two periods. Is that good? You bet on that side. So we are at Amelie Arena right now. I believe this is going to be a solo call per usual for myself. If Cooper Hopkins does join in, we will get him in this broadcast. I think he'd be happy to cover some college hockey as we're in the national championship. And now we are underway officially at Amelie Arena. Number two, Quinnipiac. Number one, Minnesota. As this is brushed aside with a stick by Justin Close, and Quinnipiac will gain the entry and do it again. So I am very interested as one of the Minnesota golfers goes down, and he's clutching onto his face, and we get an immediate penalty against Quinnipiac. So Middlestad gets hit right in the face. Again, they have the cages and all that stuff on the college hockey side. And as we talked about it for Boston University, Quinnipiac takes an immediate penalty this is an opportunity up into the face. It was Skylar Brandon Moore against Coster on the other end. Mike Coster, he got smoked a heavy elbow right into the chops of Coster, right on his face. And that is going to be an immediate penalty on Brandon Moore. And this may, this may at 1939 in the first period result in a five-minute misconduct, maybe even kick Brandon Moore out of the game. What's going on, Chuckles? How are you doing, my friend? So this is an official review right now, just 21 seconds into the game on Scholar Brendan Moore. He could be done for the rest of this contest. And Quinnipiac would put themselves in an immediate disaster territory because, as we said, it was three for seven on the power play for the Golden Gophers against the Terriers. And they have so much firepower. And now about the fifth time that I've seen that left elbow go up into the face 
and the mask of Koster, that looked excessively violent, and that could result in a major. So Costco looking on, and the referees look like they have come to a quick decision. So this is going to be a power play nonetheless. But what is going to be the call? Two-minute minor. So that is a bullet dodge for Quinnipiac. So this indeed will be a penalty on Stella Brendamore. It could have been five, but very fortunate to be a two. Again, this is just 21 seconds into the contest. We really just got in the puck drop. Quinnipiac cleared it in for the second time, and Brendamore took a head hunt right in the front as his father on, the head coach of the Carolina Hurricanes. Scholar's father is watching on. So Minnesota on a quick power play, and here we go. So McComb's going to fire one on to the left side of the red line. As a stick gets chopped up in the air, this is bounced off of a skate, flipped up out of the player's bench. It looked like it was going to. Minnesota able to keep it in. That was bounced off a skate and a stick blade. Good hand-eye coordination. It's flowing coolly now toward the right side. It'll go D-to-D for Lacombe and fire the one-timer. As this is trying to get picked up, Snuggeroo will send this around the inboards here for Cooley. Cooley. A stutter step. He'll make the pass across for the right dot. His immediate shot. Perrette says no toward the right side of the crease. And now this will be spun back around another one timer off the right pad of Perrette's and flip back down the ice. So Yana Perrette's has already made three saves. 18.45 into this first, the Golden Gophers get an immediate power play. Quinnipiac has killed 23 state, 9 for 9 in the tournament of note. But again, Minnesota is a completely different firepower in comparison to the Michigan Wolverines. Good clearing attempt. Here's Jacob Quinlan. Although it's one on four, one on one against the man that he shot it against, but there was three other reinforcements coming from Minnesota and middle stat will brush this back. There's a couple middle stats on the team right now. And the one before that on the extra defense for Luke, he scored a pair of goals alongside Logan Cooley in that game against Boston University. It was a big win for Quinnipiac against Michigan on the other end and never really allowed them to get going in the 5 2 victory for the Bobcats. So Minnesota will pick this back up off the clear and then we'll try to go left to right. 20 seconds left to go in the par play now as Cooley will take a look. And this is a pass that goes nowhere. And this allows Quinnipiac to get another shorthanded opportunity as this just gets sticked aside and allows Minnesota to catch back up in their own end. So effectively, the power play is going to be killed down to five seconds. And Brodzinski had it sticked away from him. So Minnesota has it now into the neutral zone. They'll trip back into D. So Quinnipiac and Scholar Brendan Moore, they dodge a bullet there. It's still nothing, nothing. 17.30 off to go on the first draw here with you. On the NCAA Frozen Four, this is the championship game on ESPN. This was about 8 o'clock Eastern, about 8.05 puck drop as we're just underway here in the first. And this will be sent all the way down the ice. And Minnesota will win the race for the hybrid ice. And we'll be offensive zone draw coming here for a minute. So nothing, nothing is your score. About four shots to one. Ram Pecknold, again, immediately he's going to be breathing a sigh of relief. They showed a chance for TJ Friedman to go get the puck. Jimmy Snuggerud, he was the one that was the key to look in on a few of those one piece. He got three of those. So they just got it around at Jacob Johnson. But Jimmy Snuggerud, again, part of that Team USA development program. And when we talk about it, when Cooper Hopkins was with me, when it was World Juniors between Canada and U.S., Snuggerud, he played a big part of that alongside Logan Cooley there from Minnesota. Quinnipiac didn't have a lot of players in there, but their head coach was Rand Pecknold, as it is right now. He was part of that development squad as well in the Bulls Juniors. So this is almost lost by the Gophers as they overskated into the neutral zone. Quinnipiac off the sauce. They were looking for Michael Lombardi as this is picked up now near the left side of the red line. This will be... Collected now off the forehand, and now Lombardi will try to race with Friedman. So the fourth plane out there for Quinnipiac squad. But it'll be 16.35 left. This will be in Minnesota's end. We're just underway, really, in the first period. About four shots to one in favor of the Gophers as this touches the stick of Yana Brett's the sophomore now. He's able to get some more experience, but again, a 9.50 save percentage from last year, 9.32 this year. He still had 10 shutouts. He had 12 shutouts last year. Quinnipiac's 1.50 goals against Leeds Division One. They are really that good on defense. And they have a lot of returning starters from last year. Minnesota is powered by Matthew Nyes, Logan Cooley, Jimmy Snuggerud on that first line. As this gets iced again, they can score a lot of goals and they can bring a lot of pain. So 
even though Quinnipiac likes to shut it down, Minnesota is a much different prospect than Michigan is. So Bob Motzko looking on 14 NHL draft picks, which is second in D1. Tells you how good they are. So this is an offensive zone draw win by the Gophers. They got this down near the right side of the red line. As this got knocked away from Matthew Nyes, and now it's a battle inside the office of Peretz. This will go D to D. Off the cross pass is Jackson Lacombe. That will send this one in deep. Nyes will try to get a piece of it now off the backhand with Quinnipiac. Good job there with a couple of stick lips. Here comes another slapper, and this one's blocked. Quinnipiac very close to leading the nation on block shots. They will allow to block some shots, and Peretz needs to make the save. They want to make sure that he can see it. And this is flipped back down. Minnesota will get this again as they will spin this one back around as that was Coster. He gets a chance. He's the one that suffered the big hit, but he's back out there right now. This is picked out of the air by Poulon and sent back down where Justin Close can take a look at it near the right side of the crease. This will go in between the legs of one of the Bobcats. This will allow Minnesota to gain a nice entry off the sauce pass in the high slot, and the shot goes off the left pad of Yana Peretz. As Minnesota trying to get away through some body contact, and C.J. McGee will send this one back down. But Minnesota will have to recollect. So they'll just gain the red line and flip it back in. Brett's will take no chances. He'll leave it here for the defense. 14:35 in this first. John, you're with you at Amelie Arena. We're in Tampa Bay right now. This is the NCAA Men's National Championship for Division I. Here's a lazy pass. It's stolen. They're trying to lay out Barrett's and scores. That was a careless giveaway by Quinnipiac. And Luke Middlestad scores it. The Gophers have the lead. I don't know what possessed Quinnipiac to try to make that pass. I think this was his brother, John, actually, that scored it. So this is one of the middle stats. And this is onside. This is stolen. And this should be a good goal as it was Minnesota absolutely stealing one from Quinnipiac who had no business making such a soft, careless pass through the middle. I almost wonder if that was a fluff pass, but it, honestly, on the first look, it didn't look like it. Yana Peretz was out in no man's land near the right side of the dot, and Minnesota scores first. That was just an awful play by the Bobcats. And now Justin Close will get this now. Quinnipiac gets the steal. John Middlestad is fourth goal of the season. His brother Luke's got to be happy with that. He also think about Casey Middlestad on the Boston end. is a backhand opportunity. And Minnesota was right there to brush it away near the right side of the crease as this gets picked up by Lombardi. Here's a great sauce pass, Suggerud. And that was stopped by Peretz. What a pass out of the air. That was sauce from 40 feet. And Minnesota, 21-4, and four, one scoring first on this season. They look good right now. And uh, Quinnipiac, I'm not going to say they're in trouble, but if they keep making mistakes like that, this is going to go one way and one way only. And this is Flob. That was Quillen that tried to get a shot on, and that was denied. It pretty much just went away from him. And now Jackson McComb. We'll get this pass across as it's picked off. And here's a stick lift by Quinnipiac near the left side of the face-off dot. This is still battle floor right now with Quinlan. The first line's out there with Sam Lipkin. They did a lot of damage against the Wolverines. And this goes softly off the left pad of Justin Close and now recollected. This will be an opportunity for Minnesota, although it's two on three. And again, a little left for the sauce. And they'll put this one in deep as this is picked up by Quinnipiac and then Intercepted by Minnesota from about 80 feet. This will be sent in deep. Again, the Bobcats have conceded the first goal. They only average 1.5 goals against per season. Again, that's almost around tournament average, maybe about two in the tournament average. Again, it's understandably more firepower. But Quinnipiac likes to lock and key this thing, but a careless mistake opened the door here for Minnesota. So Minnesota now will try to flip it out of their own end, and this is recollected one-handed off the backhand pick. And now here's Quinlan. Will fire and a good block on the other end by Minnesota as they'll knock this one away. And this gets picked up. Logan Cooley providing some punishment as this is not called off the cross check and sent all the way back down. This could be a break for Minnesota, although admittedly they'll have to fight through some skate blades. 
And now Quinlan, he gets stick lifted on the other end. Minnesota is playing with that same frivolous pace that Quinnipiac's trying to do, but they have iced it with 11.57 in the first. So John Middlestad is able to intercept a pass wide open in the middle of the slot, and that turns out to be the goal. That's definitive right now, although we still have tons of time left to go in the first. I was really looking forward to this game. Again, admittedly from uh, Michigan side for me when you're hearing this broadcast, a little bit sad that the Wolverines weren't playing in the final, but Quinnipiac ultimately deserves everything they got. They dominated Michigan on that end, but I still think Minnesota is the class of college hockey right now. Quinnipiac, for as good as they are, they do deserve to be here, but Minnesota is yet another hurdle, and this is the most dangerous one to climb right now. But this is the summit. They win this. They win the national championship, does Quinnipiac. Same for Minnesota. Down to 11.25. We'll have to go in the first. It's a 1-0 lead for John Middlestad and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. As this is picked up, Lombardi tried to shoot this one short side, and this one pinball all the way back into the neutral zone. And Quinnipiac will elect to dump this in, and this will be a whistleblower. With 11-14, it goes into the netting. We get a commercial break. It's one nothing. Golden Gophers come right back. We'll have more for you. And the complete game story at hopelesssportsguide.wordpress.com. Been looking forward to this one for a long time. Thank you for uh, following along, Chuckles, on that side. I don't know how many people we will get on the YouTube side admittedly, but uh, we will figure this out when we get to it. I imagine for the YouTube side, there's not going to be as many people that want to follow along for college sports, but this is about as cool as it gets for the NCAA National Championship. If you want to get a chance to see some high-quality hockey and some D1 picks, you get a lot of that. You get a lot of chance to look at future prospects and what the NHL can bring to you. And then I also say it this way, in between um, toward – Let's say February and all that when we got into the World Juniors. When you're thinking about it, that's more toward the summertime, excuse me, but more toward the World Juniors, you also get a look at of all the other prospects like a Connor Bedard that we saw in Canada, some of the other stuff for Logan Cooley and everything else in the United States. So now on the collegiate level, you get a chance to see some of those play for their alma mater, and it's Really fun, honestly, because you get to see the high level that these guys can bring. And the league is in good hands. These guys, if you've never watched any of this stuff before, it can make your jaw drop, some of the plays that they can make. And that is not just to sound nice. That is the actual truth of everything that they can bring to you. So there's one vote on the YouTube side right now. I said, does Minnesota defeat Quinnipiac for the D1 hockey title tonight? And the one vote says, yes, that could be a Golden Gophers fan. Again, when you're in Michigan and Minnesota, you're on the hot bed of hockey. So Justin Close, 26-9-1, and a 1-9-9 goals against. And on the other side for Peretz, he's about uh, 130 on that end. So both teams sub two goals against. And it is just an exceptional matchup. Picked up, and this goes just to the left. Snuggaroo had another opportunity that just went wide. And now near the left side of the red line is this trying to get recollected coolly off of a spin. And now Matthew Nyes. Does Peretz have this with their right pad? He's going to hold on to it. That was the question as they were continuing to work, do work in behind the office of Yannick Peretz. 10-49 left to go in the first. As this is picked up now, Matthew Nyes, he was trying to just do some damage. And then Hornquist on the uh, third side, which are Navari Rassinen and Jacob Norquist for Quinnipiac, the third line defense, where I'm taking a squad, and just trying to cut him off. So now the first line forwards, Jacob Quinlan, he lost this one as he's trying to get picked up now by Metza. So immediately, a quick line change as Metza will get a chance to pick this up off the Quinlan feed, and this gets sent back down as this will be picked up by Brock Faber. He could have went into the NHL right now, but he elected to stay an extra year to win a national title with Minnesota. His team is one goal to the good right now. It's one nothing Gophers. 10-20 to go in the first thereabouts. It's been iced, 
and Minnesota's got an offensive zone draw upcoming. So thank you to anyone that listens to this in between YouTube and Twitter spaces or even listens to late at the Hopeless Sports Guy podcast. We will have everything as far as the game story and on the podcast side. It's everything that's in the live part of the action. We're going to record those breaks. Those are not included. So it's just going to be the game story here for you. So Friedman tries to win the draw. Now Rassenen will get this one down deep as this is picked up here by Minnesota off the backhand at Middlestad. He was the one that scored the first as this is flipped up off the right side of the pane of glass. And Minnesota now will just chop at this to get this into the neutral zone now as this will go back down deep. You know, Peretz will play it, although this may bounce off the zebra. This will stay Logan Cooley with a long fire. And this bounces off a friendly fire, one of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. It's a four on two the other way. But this will be collected by Minnesota now in their own end. They'll play this forehand nicely off of a bounce. And this will go just wide, sent back down the ice again for another ice. Middlestad will touch up with the hybrid side, and Minnesota will get an offensive zone draw. Quinnipiac can't change their forwards on us. <clears throat> so as I'm looking at this right now, I know I have some text coming across on that end. Again, not everybody knows what I'm broadcasting, but that's fine. Again, sometimes we have some college hockey side of it, and nobody wants to join me unless it's an NBA game because they're not as familiar. But I can't miss something like this. Logan Cooley. Ends up taking the draw, but this will be deep into the end. Still a Quinnipiac. They need to get this out right to left. Quinnipiac in the black jerseys with the yellow piping. And Minnesota in the maroon. And this is also picked up in the white shirts with the yellow striping. So Quinnipiac. Quinlan now will get a chance to pick this up, and they'll just cascade it into the offensive zone as this gets recollected off the backhand by middle stage. And he's It's this now in his own end. Here the left side, he's going to go. And he's going to put this in behind the office of Peretz and now finish off his check as one of the Bobcats got absolutely double teamed, almost a half hip check as this is sent in deep, but it gets away from Logan Cooley. And now Quinnipiac tries to dump this down across the brazen end. You have all four logos of the Frozen Four. That was the Michigan logo as this just goes off sides on a Minnesota entry. 8.49 left to go in the first. It was a lone goal for John Middlestad as Peretz was out on an island near the left dot. one nothing Minnesota with 8.49 left. Come right back. When we do get into the first intermission, I will take you around the league as far as NHL scores, some MLB scores as well. I don't believe we have a lot of basketball to get underway with in this because you only have one game left in the regular season for most teams. Again, the Dallas Mavericks have just been eliminated, according to yesterday on that side. And there was a curious situation in where they were. The NBA is going to maybe investigate in the rules of tanking because from the previous trade of the Kyrie Irving side, they have a top 10 protected pick coming back to them if they did not make the playoffs. Very convenient that they sat all the starters and only played Doncic for one quarter. Is it not? They're trying to get a top 10 pick. So maybe under investigation on that side. Seems to be pretty blatant, but we'll see what the NBA decides to figure out on that end. But we will take you in behind the NHL scoreboard and the MLB score. So Victoria Arlen on the ESPN side, she was interviewing Ram Pecknell, and they pretty much said we need to play better if we want to get back into this game. 8.40, left to go on the first again for the official reporter side, Ram Pecknell being the Interviewed by Victoria Arlen, and he was flat out said that this team needs to play better if they want to get back into it. Here's a three-on-two rush and way off sides. 
That was Colin Graff. That could have been something for Quinnipiac, but somebody didn't hold up in time. So when they showed this off of the replays, this was Luke Middlestad with a pair of goals. He was the extra defenseman, but not to be outdone in this game. How about his brother John on that side? He's the one that finishes it off for the first game of it right now. It's spelled just like my name, Jail Adrian. John Reinot here with you, John on the play-by-play -play side for NCAA National Championship B1 title game between the Quinnipiac Bobcats and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. This has been a lot of fun so far. Good keep in there by Quinnipiac. And this will be collected by Minnesota, but might be flopped. And now they're collected by Sam Lipkin. They try to fire one right on, but this gets flopped before it gets to close. Now on the high slot, Quinnipiac trying to deal with this near the right side dot. This is a stick lift in uh, Minnesota. Stuck in behind their own goal. They'll pick this up now to the left side red line. This is sent back down by Jake Johnson. He'll get this toward the left side. Dodd, this is fired off the right pad of Justin Close and then off the rebound embankment. This gets blocked, and Minnesota will pick it up. Now it's one on two the other way. Minnesota, nice job on the other end for Bryce Brodzinski just to slow up in time. Five shots to two. Quinnipiac's got possession right now, but they only have two shots on the shot for it here. They're down one nothing. 7.30 left to go. Minnesota letting them take their time off this breakout as they want to go right to left. As this gets iced again, and Minnesota will have a fourth offensive draw off the ice in the first period alone. 7.27 left to go in the first frame. <clears throat> so everything that Ram Pechtold said, as far as that recent interview, in the sense of needing to play better, feeling a little bit nervous, and uh, wanting to get more shots and activity on close, he's exactly right. That's everything that we're seeing right now against Quinnipiac. And again, they've been to the national championship stage before. I think it was six seasons ago on that side. However, this would be their first national championship in program history should they get one. Minnesota is the class of college hockey right now, as this is nicely played off the cycle. This will still stay with Minnesota. This will go D to D off the one timer, and that gets fired wide to the right side of the glass. As this gets recollected here by Coster, he stuck all the way up the pinch. He was the one that took the heavy hit there from Skyler Brendamore, but it's good to see him back on the ice, and he's okay. As this is a shot in toward the middle of the slot, and this bounces up into the netting. It did bounce back into the ice, but since it went to the netting, we will get a stoppage with 6.50. Up to go in the first. And that line there, I think that was Brodzinski, Nelson, and Nevers, the second one for Bob Monsko's squad, because they had some chances near the dot to dot from left to right and in the middle, and that was just taken away. <clears throat> so Ram Pecknell looks on. Again, he wants his team to be able to find some answers. I think they're going to get better as this game goes along. They're not out of this by any stretch of the imagination, but if they continued this same type of pace and work, Minnesota would be very thankful. This is a chance for Michael Lombardi, as this will get picked up in toward the middle of the slot, and Minnesota will collect now. This is Snuggery off the pass for Nyes, and Nyes will try to just get this across the red line, as this was a battle for the puck, and Snuggery will... Dump it in as this gets recollected near the right dot. Here's a no-look back pass, and this is going to allow the Gophers to collect near the left dot. Coster tried to send one out in front of the left crease, and this gets picked up now the other way by the Bobcats. It's a two-on-two, -two and great defense by Faber as he knocks that one away. Snuggaroo still trying to get some work in as well. He might be running on a jet fuel here as Quinnipiac goes down on their own end. Logan Cooley tried to send this out in front of the middle of the circles, but it's picked off by the Bobcats. And now the Gophers get an opportunity to collect as they will steal from a 50-foot pass. So they're back in their defensive end right now looking to get set up. Quinnipiac loves to cut off the space of any teams that they play. They're one of the best at it. Cutting off space, blocking shots, and we have Yana Pretz, who's a blockade back there in that, again, with a 150 goals against on the season for a team on that side. That leads Division one by eight a lot. So 520, good work by Minnesota to brush it in deep and press. We'll have to answer that was Rim Pitlick that pushed it all the way through off a stick chop. And Pretz will elect to hold. What I can tell you from covering the game the other day against the Michigan Wolverines in Quinnipiac against Pretz, he is not one of the goaltenders that plays the puck. He is someone that will take a freeze, take the draw, and expect his team to win it. 
They are very good on that draw in that respect as they do win a defensive one, but that's what he elects to do, and I like that. You have confidence in your team. Quinlan now he scored two goals in that game against Michigan in the first period, looking to get his team on the board, but he's written off the puck on the right side wall. But this will be collected by Graf, his pass. This will be an opportunity here for Zach Medsa. Now Graf will recollect in the high slot for Quinnipiac because this is sent back around the inboards. Now Quinlan can't locate it. This is Sam Lipkin will have to brush this, but this gets bounced off the right side faceoff dot and sent back the other way for Lamb for Minnesota. And now this is picked up across the Frozen Four logo for the Golden Gophers. <clears throat> Jackson Lacombe will play his pass across his defensive partner, Mike Koster. And now recollected now Koster and Nelson take a hit near the left side of the neutral zone. And this is dumped back in by Michael Lombardi on a four flanker. Ram Pegnold squad, 425 left to go in this first. It's a 1-0 lead for the Golden Gophers. It's been a fast game right now, but it's been a fun one. As Minnesota trying to get this out of their own end, Lamb will send this back across now. Well, this will be an opportunity for Koster. Off the spin, he'll get the clear, and this will allow Quinnipiac to get possession. It's been a neutral zone battle here over the last four or five minutes or so right now. As space is starting to get shut down. Minnesota got that early goal from John Middlestaff, but that's it, and that's all right now. The first this will touch the right pad of just a close. We'll take no chances, and a will hold on. It's going to be Quinnipiac offensive zone draw. With 3.56 left to go in the first frame, the Gophers have the lead as we go to break. one nothing. So we're getting close to the end of the first period, and as I said, when we get into the intermission, I will give you a look around the NHL, look around some stuff in the league and the MLB, and then take a quick little break before we get into the second period of this. So I hope you guys are enjoying this contest wherever and whenever you listen. I know tomorrow is going to be Easter Sunday, so I have some family obligations to attend to on that side, but on Monday... I will be with Cooper Hopkins. We will have the coverage in between the Calgary Flames and the National Predators. It'll be about 9.15 Eastern on Monday as the Western Conference is still alive and well in that wild card race. It's a three-team race in the sense of the Preds, the Jets, and the Flames. I believe they are all in action tonight. The Preds and the Jets are actually playing each other. So the Flames do need some help. Again, they have the tiebreaker with that previous game on Wednesday when they beat the Jets. But there's going to be some help that they might need throughout the years. We're very close to ending the NHL regular season. <clears throat> so offensive zone draw upcoming. About four minutes left to go in the first. Quinnipiac has a 10-5 faceoff edge as this is picked up now by Minnesota defensively off the tie-up. It's 5-2 to two on shots, though. Minnesota, you're talking about as good as Quinnipiac is on defense. Minnesota's matching that. As this goes off the right pad of Ferretz, it's not clear. In a diving attempt, and behind the office of Ferretz, gets knocked away. But this will allow Minnesota to just hold that blue line off the back skate near the left side and then allow a attempt there to be cleared just momentarily. Now here's a good stretch pass. Here's an opportunity there. It's picked up near the right side of the wall, and that was a chance for Nevers, but he got worked off the puck. It's Quinnipiac Quinlan here the other way. He'll hold. He'll turn away now in the high slot as this is near the left dot. Graf will fire it into the traffic, and that's sold by Justin Close as one of the Bobcats ran into each other. They attempted to bowl over Johnson on the other end for Minnesota, 
but that didn't work. They tried to take out Ryan Johnson. So 307 left to go in this first. You had Graf near the high slot. He fired one on this one in the stomach of Justin Close. And a couple players went down. They were battling for that puck to try to get some possession and knock it away for Close. But it's another offensive zone drive for Quinnipiac. Again, 10-6 advantage. Now make it 10-7 as Minnesota gets a couple key defensive zone faceoff wins. Here's a good flip the other way. Logan Cooley drops it for Snugger and trying to give it back to Cooley. And he was taken out way before that pass. But we're still live right now as Minnesota will just brush this in deep. They did not allow Logan Cooley to get even a modicum of space on that one. That was a good-looking play there for Snugger. Now near the right side wall, Graf gets his shot blocked. As Ram Pecknell given the first line a long extra double shift here. As this is collected now, Logan Cooley. Watch out for him. He's dangerous. Here's a drop for Snugger. It's Snugger and Nice and Cooley. That first line that does a ton of damage. Here's a great pass in the middle of the slot. And this just got knocked away from Middlestad. And now he will go back and recollect here. As this will be Luke Middlestad. He'll pick it up now. As this bounces off the skate of Graf. Minnesota. Here's a sauce pass played in off the end boards. But it got knocked away from Cooley. Good defense there by the Bobcats. We're down to two minutes left to go in this first frame. John, under with you for the NCAA National Championship. It's Minnesota and Quinnipiac. Here's a shot near the white side wall. They get deflected here as this is picked up here by Nyes. And now, in between the legs, they'll get in through a couple defensemen. Here's Cooley. His shot gets pinball near the right side of the faceoff duck. The Quinnipiac Bobcats will flip it in now. As this will be recollected here by Brock Faber. He'll send this back across to his defensive partner. And we'll do this again about 120, but it's stolen and behind the office there. And then swallowed right up as Minnesota finished off the check. That was Faber. And now Minnesota will flip it. It's Bryce Brodzinski. Send it all the way down, but that is ice. 116 left to go in the first. So Bryce Brodzinski did not hesitate to deliver the pain in behind the office of Justin Close. He wanted to make sure that Quinnipiac couldn't get any type of opportunity. That was Nelson and Quinlan and Bryce Brodzinski. They finished off Quinlan on that side in behind the net. 116 left in the first frame. It's a 1-0 lead The Minnesota. John Middlestad. Here's an offensive zone draw win. Flubbed on the one-timer. It was Quinnipiac as Minnesota tries to get this now near the right side. Now loose in the high slot. This is blocked. Trying to get picked up by Quinnipiac. Closes down off the diving save. And Minnesota clears it into the neutral zone as Metza tries to quickly push this right to left. It's Quinlan now. Good, clever backhand entry. Drops it in for Graf. And now Quinlan tries to pick it up near the left side boards. This will go D to D off the backhand, but it's not held in. Here for Johnson. And Johnson hits this off of one of the Golden Golfers. But now here's Sam Lipkin. We'll just fire this in from about 50 feet. Now down to 30 seconds left to go in the first. Minnesota wants to carry this 1-0 lead in the locker room. Quinnipiac had one of the first danger chances in about six minutes as Rossin and Nordquist. They're the third-line defense out for Van Pecknold's squad in Quinnipiac. Down to 15 seconds now as Rossin in tries to dump this in. Somebody lost a glove hand, but they're going to pick this one back up and settle it back down as Minnesota will. Calmly play this D to D in their own end and see if they can bleed out the final five seconds. Here's a drop pass into the neutral zone. Minnesota, if they shoot this quickly, they can get something. And Peretz makes the glove save. So we are down to 0 .001 on the clock. I'm going to officially close out the recorder. That is going to end the first period. Minnesota, they get a long shot from Matthew Nyes. That's a buzzer beater that's denied, but we will end the first one nothing Gophers. So here's an opportunity for me while the game's still going with point zero zero one, as nothing can happen at that point, but we still have to get a draw officially. I'm going to take you across the NHL scoreboard. So let's do this. We will take you through the finals first, and then I'll take you around the stuff in progress and let you know what's still upcoming. So the Coyotes, they get a 5-4 win in overtime over the Anaheim Ducks. That was at Moore Arena. 5-4. It was the Oilers. 6-1, and they get the victory over the Sharks. It's their seventh straight victory. 
And here's something else I'm going to have to do on the computer side is I will pull up another window here for stats and standings as they show what everything else is left. And we will get this all clarified. So with a 6-1 win for the Oilers, we'll take a look at the goal scores and we'll see who they are. So RNH opened it. It was Tomas Hurdle made it 1-1 with 7-0 in the first, and then Connor McDavid is 63rd of the season from Warren Fogel. Zach Hyman and Derek Ryan, they were the goal scorers in the second period in 1905 and 1953. The late goals are killers, and the Sharks gave up two. Philip Broberg with his first of the year, and then Connor McDavid with his 64th. It was James Reimer, 29 out of 35. He got roughed up. And Stuart Skinner, he had an easy night, 22 out of 23 as the Oilers get a humongous win over the Sharks. I think the Sharks are going to end their regular season. And again, I'll have to look at this as far as the stats. I pull up the window, so let me see if I can. The Sharks will be the only team in the NHL that will not get to 10 wins on home ice. As it stands right now, they're 8-22-11. That is absolutely pitiful on that, and I, I can't believe that. So another final here for you, the Sabres. They stay alive in the wild card race. They need to win. They have games in hand, but they need to win all the way across to be able to stay in this race. They get a win over the Carolina Hurricanes 4-3. We'll take a look and see who scored those goals. Casey Middlestat opened it. So the Middlestats are feeling good right now. Casey Middlestat opened it with four minutes. Then it was Seth Jarvis and Jesper Fox. Gave it a 2 1 lead for the Hurricanes after one. Rasmus Dallin tied it up at two with 4 4. Sebastian Ajo. We took the lead for Carolina before Casey Middlestad again with his second. It was 3 3 after two at the 18 18 mark. Tage Thompson got the long tally in the third and final frame. It's 46 of the year from Dylan Cousins. If you have not watched the Buffalo Sabres, I mean, they'd be a treat if they got in the playoffs, but Tage Thompson is an absolute freaking beast. And he's a six foot six center that can do do everything. He's got a 105 mile an hour shot. No, that's not an exaggeration. An absolute bullet. Pittsburgh Penguins, they take WC1 at the moment. They have a 5 1 win over Detroit. It was Alexander, Alex Nylander, Sidney Crosby. Danton Heinen, Crosby again, and Genny Malkin. Crosby gets three points of note in this game. It is career point 1,500 for Sid the Kid. Pew Suter got the long goal for Detroit. Ville Husso got shelled 23 out of 28. And Tristan Jari, about as easy of a night as you can get, 19 of 20 on the Mountain Bay game as they get the win. Any more finals for you? No, not on that side. We'll give you the ones in progress. It's 2-0 Blue Shirts over the Blue Jackets. The Rangers got the lead. 4-3 Sens lead over the Lightning with 13, 17 seconds to go in the second. We'll take a look at those goal scores. So it was, start from the beginning here, Drake Batherson, 30 seconds in. Alex Kalorn, 251 on the power play. Julian Gauthier from Dylan Gambrell and Jake Sanders at 1057. Ottawa had a 2-1 lead. Then it was Patrick Brown with his fourth of the year for Mark Kastelik and Adam Zub. Brandon Hagel on the power play, Victor Hedman on the power play. Three power play tallies for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Anyone else on the ice would have a minus three because Dabrinkit has a power play, so three of their goals were even strength. It's a 4-3 lead. Dabrinkit scored, just scored, with 17 seconds left to go in the second. That's right in 1943, so that's a live, live update for you as much as it can be. It's the Maple Leafs 4-1 over the Canadiens. 2-1, the Panthers lead over the Capitals. Panthers must win to be able to keep pace in that East to hold on to WC1. They can retake it from Pittsburgh if they win today against the Caps. 1-0 Jets over the Preds. All the Flames are watching that. Flames fans are watching that one as far as what's going to happen. If, if the Jets lose and the Preds win, that will help the Flames, and it will also put the – Flames probably, if they win this game today against the Canucks in that second wild card spot because of the tiebreaker that they own against Winnipeg for going 2-1 and one in the season series. Shifley, the only goal so far is at the end of two. His 40th from Vlad Domestikov and Josh Morrissey. He's got his 57th apple. 2-0 Islanders over the Flyers. Islanders, again, must win to keep pace. They can retake their spot with a win over the Islanders. 
It's 2-1 Bruins over the Devils. The, the Bruins won the last couple of games. They will have, I believe, the most points all time in the NHL in a single season campaign. And 2-1 Wild over the Blues. What's left tonight? These are the late, late games. It is the Blackhawks and Kraken at 10. Same thing for the Flames and the Canucks in the latest one. That's a great matchup. The Avalanche and the Kings. It'll be 10.30 Eastern on NHL ESPN Plus. If you have ESPN Plus, I highly recommend it. Again, you can watch pretty much everything except NBA and MLB games. They have their own separate thing. But you can get everything else along some of the documentaries for 100 bucks a year. No, I don't work for them. But as far as all of that in comparison to uh, NHL center ice packages or anything else in Canada, 100 bucks a year is a hell of a lot cheaper than those other options. And it's the app is as good as you can get on that side. So we will be using that a lot. When Cooper Hopkins and I get into the playoff side of it, again, you won't cover everything in the playoffs with me. Maybe Alec Nava will join on that side. But Cooper Hopkins and I will have the Stanley Cup finals, bar none. That'll be the two-man booth the whole way through. We got six to seven. He got, we had a six-game series last year. He's only got five of those with me. I would imagine he's only skipped pretty much all of them here with me at that point. He's my always main broadcast partner, Cooper Hopkins, and then Alec Nava on the other end when he joins in. He knows his stuff, and he's really, really good. He's always the back end. If I don't have any help, or if Cooper's not available, I'll ask and throw that out there if he wants to get some extra work in. Again, for Alec Nava, admittedly more, more of a college student, not younger than me, I'm 36. He's more toward, I think, 21, 22. So he's in the midst of a college side, so he's not always available. So probably solo broadcast for me for here on out for a little bit. When we do get into the first round of the playoffs, I do have an obligation in between the Waterford Sharks and the Muskegon Voyagers here locally. Uh, that's sometime next week. But around the first round, I will have the playoff capsules on the YouTube side. It'll be a Twitter space to show all the first round predictions, stats, highlights, everything else that I can bring to you. To help you make your predictions, I'll give my thoughts of who wins each first round series. It's a labor-intensive work, but I do it for the first round, and I do it for the Stanley Cup Finals. I know the other rounds in between, I could, but there's so much games in the call, I just take a break on that side because it's pretty much every other day or every day that I'm doing a broadcast. I try to cover as much as I can in the first round, and I try my best to get at least one game in every first round series. The only one I wasn't able to get to last year was a 4-0 sweep with the Abs and the Preds, but we made up for that when the Abs won the Stanley Cup against the lightning. I'll be right back. It's a quick break. <clears throat> I'll be right back. During the Jeep Celebration event, get 2.9% finance in 2023 Jeep Grand Cherokee Lorraine and Grand Cherokee 4x8. Visit Jeep.com for new inventory available near you. Historically, sauces are either sweet or spicy, but Arby's new King's Hawaiian chicken sandwich is both, because Arby's makes both history and sandwiches. Arby's, we have the meat. At Quinnipiac, we know success doesn't just happen. It takes a purpose, one that's fueled with a relentless determination. We are the ambitious, those motivated, our passions into meaningful professions, those who yearn to be part of a community where everyone is welcome to thrive. Immersive academics, lifelong friendships, world class athletes. We bring the ambition together with leadership. Great the University, ambition unleashed. Thanks to one behind the secrets. Let me tell you about the greatest roster ever assembled. The monster, the outlaw. We can't forget about the boss. Sometimes we just want to be your heroes. The someone secrets, the greatest men of all time. Welcome to the final push. Where greatness is tested. Where unstoppable forces collide. Legends break free. And legacies are etched in gold. It's playoffs time. And whatever happens next is going to be beautiful. Alright, pay attention. Welcome to Fandom 101. 
We'll cover the tools of the trade from bold fingers in the way to the super secret way. How's that for a course description? Lesson one, your game starts long before the opening whistle, so arrive prepared. Two, if something beats your interest, raise your hand. And three, work in groups. NCAA championships, attendance is encouraged, passion is mandatory. Get your seats today at NCAA.com to class is mixed. Welcome back. This is over on ABC Razor. Something in store happening to Brewers or something. Possibly, possibly could be tonight. <laughs> looking for 62, but it's Pavel Zaka against this former team, by the way. Obviously, Eric Hall of Pavel Zaka. And he scored two goals. It's the 20 goal mark for the first time. Oh, what a time. Yeah, what a, what a deal for the Boston Brewers get this guy. So, Razor mentioned that 62 wins would tie the all time NHL record. This game is happening live right now. ABC, uh, and here is the Boston Bruins season. Uh, it's pretty good, not bad, Racer, not bad at all. It, it has been a special season. Though. They got a long way, and they need 16 more after game 82. But, but this regular season has been something else. My Razor, of course, uh, does a great job covering the Bruins all season long. Let's talk about this game, though. All right, so got the phone plugged in there from third period. Should we need it? I know we are going to get into the second here shortly, so I think there's enough battery life for that as we go across. Again, I appreciate anyone else that's popped in and out in between this uh, YouTube feed and Twitter spaces. I said, does Minnesota defeat Quinnipiac for the D1 hockey title? One of you says yes, two of you say no. We get some Quinnipiac fans in here trying to get their first NCAA one title in program history, I believe. So. Two shots isn't going to be enough, even if with the defensive style that they play. It's been decades since Minnesota has won a national championship. Quinnipiac has never won a national championship. So, yes, I do have that correct. Quinnipiac's never won in Minnesota. It's certainly been a while, and I'm sure that we will get the uh, – notes and the particulars i do have the lead in as far as what i can bring so again minnesota enters this game 29 9 and 1 and quinnipiac 33 4 and 3. when you think about logan cooley let's just look at this right now logan cooley and jimmy snuggerud from pittsburgh pennsylvania and chaska minnesota are the first set of freshmen in program history to score 50 plus points each Cooley, the NCAA leader in assists in 37, present our nation's best 15-game point streak, and that's been extended throughout the tournament. Minnesota defensemen have generated a combined 139 points, 27 goals, 112 assists, tops among the Frozen Four teams that were there. That was in the leading of the Frozen Four side of it. So Minnesota generates a lot from the D side. They score a lot on their forward side, Quinnipiac. On the other end, they lock down. It's a one nothing lead. It was John Middlestad who scored it. <clears throat> to them, the whole world looks like an opportunity, one to be seized, built upon, and made better for their sport. And the people around it. To student athletes, every opportunity is a chance to change what could be and show the world what opportunity <clears throat> can do. Your vehicle takes a beating from the environment. Keep your vehicle looking better than you. It's Cerakote's red and ceramic paint seal. Let me see if I can pull this up really quickly for the uh, Major League Baseball scores. We'll duplicate this hockey side and flip it over. So we'll give you the finals first. Per usual, it's a 3 2 win for the Mariners over the Guardians. They're now 4 and 5. That's Cooper Hopkins squad. Shout out to him, my friend. Mariners get the win. We were able to cover the opening day game against Bieber and Castillo. That was a lot of fun when the Mariners got the big bomb from Ty France. They're now 4-5 on the year. The Rays are 8-0 on the season. Here's who the Rays have played to get 8-0, but again, you have to win your games. It was the Tigers, the Nationals, and now the Athletics. So the most soft serve that you can get, but you got to win those games. 5-2, the Mets beat the Marlins. 
14-5 Red Sox over the Tigers, 10-3 Cubs over the Rangers, 6-5 Royals over the Giants. The Phillies start to win a couple in a row. Now they're 3-5. and five. They beat the Reds 3-2. The Twins dispatched the Astros. They're off to a rough start this year. Twins are 6-2. and two. The Astros are 3-6. and six. They win 9-6. and six. So now they said Minnesota is 19 1 and 3 when leading after one. They laid after two, they haven't lost this year. I know some things are made to be broken, and it was actually broken on the NHL side. The Flames were the only team that didn't have a win when trailing going into the third period. They had back to back before they lost to the Blackhawks and then beating the Jets. They got swept out of the Blackhawks this year on that side. <clears throat> So shots on goal were just seven to three in that first period, but again, it was John Middlestad who got the goal here from Minnesota. As we are underway, they are going to be going uh, left to right on that side, right to left Minnesota, left to right Quinnipiac. As Quinnipiac has it now on the defensive end, they'll try to backhand this to Quinlan as this is picked off now. Jackson Lacombe will get this here for Brock Faber, and he'll brush this in deep. As now Johnson. We'll try to pick it up for Quinnipiac. They'll gain the entry toward the right side wing. They'll fire right on. This goes off of the five hole close and then put back the other way before it gets intercepted across the red line by the Bobcats. Here's a chance for Ethan DeYoung. Here's the cross pass and they'll hold this off the backhand as Lombardi will try to send this back to DeYoung. As this is picked up by Quinnipiac, we'll try to send this in between the slot. And now Quinnipiac will take a D to D as it's Zach Metzka. Metzka will play this cross pass as this goes back to Lee. Now Metzka will hold. Quinlan's looking in front of the net. There's all sorts of traffic just bothering close. And that just seemed like the complete game plan for Quinnipiac on that possession. They wanted to just block for a side his sight, but they couldn't get a shot on. And now Metzka, as close follows this up, but he can't find the rebound. And then Quinnipiac tried to do the same thing he did against Eric Portillo the other day, bank it off the back. But this was solved. By close. And now picked up by Matthew Nyes. Here's Nyes. He's going to drop it here for Snuggerud. And that goes off the right stick of Brett's. And now Quinnipiac will fire as this goes off the hand of Quinlan. Quinlan fights through some body contact as it tried to be dropped by Colin Graff. And now Minnesota. Here the other way. It's Nyes. He's patient. He'll back pass this thing, but he throws it right for Quinnipiac. We'll see if they can make something happen. Joey Cipollone. And he'll fire near the left side of the post, but that goes high and off the glass. Minnesota quickly the other way. They're a good second period team as far as offense. Logan Cooley has nowhere to go, but this will go all the way back, and this will be picked up by Middlestad. So John Middlestad has it now, and this is Luke Middlestad. This is flipped up. This will be picked up now on the right side. Red line around Pitlick tries to get around Michael Lombardi. And now in between the circles, almost stolen by the Gophers, but they dodge a bullet due to Bobcats as it's sent back down deep. Bobcats now will look to recollect their only black jerseys with the yellow and white piping, kind of look like the Boston Bruins as far as the colors on that end. And then the Minnesota Golden Gophers are in the maroon pants with the white shirts and the gold piping. As this is picked up now by Quinnipiac, dumped down deep. This will be an opportunity for Faber to hit this high off the end glass where it gets recollected here by the third line defense of Rassen and Nordquist for Ram Technical Squad. As here's a long stretch pass near the left side of the wall, and this will be recollected off of some body contact. Minnesota providing the reinforcements to try to get this one out. I haven't seen Desi Bogert on the ice too much here for Quinnipiac. He's usually one of their better forwards, as this is picked up now near the left side of the red line. As it gets recollected by Lacombe, we'll send this across for favor, and that gets whistled wide near the right side of the red line. Here's a chance now. As this is picked up here for Quinlan, they're going to have to pinch in quickly to try to get Minnesota to get some pressure here. But this gets flipped near the right side of the red line. A severe angle across the wall. Jackson Lacombe, he gets taken down from behind. This will be an opportunity for Quinnipiac, and this gets solved by close. 
picked up now by the Bobcats as they'll flip it in behind Close's office as they'll pretty much hold that left side of the post. He's on the stand-up right now. Shots on goal this period are 4-1 Quinnipiac. It's a big turn from last period when they only had about three shots in that side of it already. So trying to sense the pressure of the moment, Quinnipiac knows they need one. And you really don't want to wait to the third period against Minnesota because they've won every game when winning after two. As this is picked up now by Minnesota in their own end, the 150-foot stretch pass for Quinnipiac is it's sold. And this will get picked up now into the Frozen Four logo. And now it's a race for it, and Minnesota will get that on the hybrid ice as they had to get away from a stick shaft that was for the right side of the faceoff duck. So Metza, they show off the replay. Again, you can follow this game on ESPN2. Mistakenly said ESPN on the college hockey side of it, but ESPN2 as they have uh, the Adrianza fight, the last airbender. I think that's going to be on the first ESPN, the pay-per-view side. At least they have the prelims going on that side. So ESPN2 for our contest. But again, John Reinhardt, John on at the coverage here for Twitter Spaces and the YouTube side. Thank you for listening along. This, this is picked up at scores! Off the rebound, the care of Minnesota says thank you very much. It looked like an innocent play, but it's Nelson for Minnesota. Jackson Nelson that gives the Golden Gophers a 2-0 lead. And if you're Quinnipiac now, I can say this openly. This is just a nice bank, and if you, you want to get money, you go to the bank. That's what they say. That's what Alec Nava likes to say when he's in the broadcast with me. Jackson Nelson, he gets the bounce. He flips it over the head of Peretz and into the net. Minnesota has a 2 nothing lead as they chant the Minnesota letters that spell it out. That's how they do it when they score. The Golden Golfers fans got to feel pretty good. I'm going to say this openly. If you're Quinnipiac and you don't get this next goal, I honestly think it's over. I don't think there's any way, any way on earth that Quinnipiac would come back from a three-goal deficit. Minnesota is just a completely different team, even from Michigan. I understand Frozen Four. That's a great uh, spot to be in with four good teams, but this is good work there by Graf as he got all the way through. But Minnesota is a different animal. I really believe that they're the best team in college hockey. I wanted to see Michigan and Minnesota selfishly on that side for Big Ten because you'll see me broadcast from Detroit, Michigan on that side. But still, Quinlan now in the high slot as he's trying to weave in through the traffic. It's a chance for Sam Lipkin as Colin Graff gets worked off the puck. It's the first line out there for the Impecnal squad. And you got to sense the moment right now. It's Johnson, Metza, and the entire first line of the forwards. they got to get something here in the second period. they got to make it a 2-1 game. As this is picked up now, Metza. We'll get the steal. We'll put this in. It's close. We'll take a look at it. Now, this is in behind his office as Minnesota tries to get this one out. TJ Friedman, as they just make the change. Now, for Joseph Leon, the next third and four. This will go back D to D. Can it be held in? Yes, it can. Longquist will send this across. This will go wide of close and try to get picked back up now. Off the back end, here's Matthew Nice. Watch out for him, even though it's one on two. He can make something happen. As this is recollected, it took two players to take him off the puck as Jaden Lee had to finish it, but they can't dispossess Nice, and he tried to forehand his way through the defense. Now on the high slot, this gets deflected, but this bounces off of one of the Bobcats, and now recollected Friedman with his pass. He tried to send this all the way to the other end of the ice, and now it bounces back to them as it bounces off a Minnesota body. Gain the red line, so it is not ice, but just barely, and this goes off of Brodzinski. And picked up now by the Bobcats. They'll flip it in from 100 feet. Close will play it from the stick. We'll throw it right back to his defense. And Minnesota now enjoying a 2 0 lead with 13 20 thereabouts to go in the second period. John Henry with him the call. We're at Amelie Arena right now in Tampa Bay. It's the site of the NCAA Division I Men's Hockey Championship. It's Minnesota and Quinnipiac. Whoever wins this one wins the title, bar none. This is the last day. So it's a day of championships and a week of championships, I should say, in between the NCAA Final Four and now the Frozen Four on that side. That's what we've covered this week. It's been a lot of fun. As it's picked up now, Metz side through the traffic. He tried to just send this crease to crease right to left, but it didn't hit close. Here's another one from the point. This gets deflected out in front of Minnesota there to clean up the mess. As this gets picked up, this gets gloved down by Metz. We'll get a clear and toward the red line. Flip it just over 
point of the Minnesota defenseman now was Tellier. Christophe Tellier tries to get a piece of the third one up before he had to squat. This is just sent back around the inboards. Minnesota will collect. It's sent back down by Medsa. Medsa now, he's been out there for a long time, about two and a half minutes. And they fire it, and they say it goes in off close. And I'm not sure who got that one. That might be Tellier. There was a push right in front as he had a chance from Metza, fired it right on, and they either hit Tellier perfectly, and it bounced in off his skate, and it brushed close, and it's not going to count against the contact, but I have to admittedly take another look at this as Metza from a severe angle. No, Metza's shot just goes right in. Metza's shot was a tip by Tellier. I don't even know if it was tipped by Tillier. Maybe he had a stick inside the crease. But either way, Metza and Tellier, they team up. And Quinnipiac gets the goal that they desperately need. They get back within one. It's quite frankly one that I said that they had to have. They could not go down by three. And now this is really a brand new ball game. Tellier is going to get the goal. He must have just got a stick on it as it was crossing the red line. It was Metza that fired it right on. And Tellier was... Right in close his grill. So 11.50 left to go in the second. Picked up now at the backhand. Quinlan couldn't locate it. The pass wasn't hard enough. And this is a hand pass. It'll blow the play dead. So Christoph Tellier is going to get the goal. Metza fired it on from the right side. Got from a severe angle. And I want to see if he just got a tip on it. So they showed the first one that went past Perez. But here is my second look. The Bobcats, yeah, it flipped in off the skate. It was not a kicking motion. It was already just angled in. It's a 2-1 game now. Minnesota's advantage cut down to one. Right now, it's a 2-1 game between Minnesota and Quinnipiac. The vote of four, as we have right now, is split in between Minnesota and Quinnipiac as far as winning the title. 2-2 split. It's been a good game. And, again, it was an answer that had to be had. Again, different broadcasters will tell you different things in their thoughts and purposes. I've, I've seen Minnesota several times this year and throughout the Big Ten side. So that'll be i wouldn't say expertise for me but as following college sports as much as i can give you a chance to watch some of the college hockey that gets intersected in with the nhl scoreboard because admittedly i'm an nhl nba mlb and college affiliate heavy but i do follow a little bit of the college game do follow a little bit of the world juniors i'm no expert by any means although some of the people that are nice will proclaim me to be this had to be a goal on the other end for quinnipiac there there's no other way about it and it was. It was finished off by Tellier on the third line. So Christophe Filion, Sheck Lanier, and Tellier. Tellier from Metza. Get the job done to make it 2-1. And we will see where the rest of the game will take us. That's really all you can say right now. Within this chance in the second period, if Quinnipiac gets another, well, then this kind of changes everything. If Minnesota can get a two-goal lead going into the third, I would think at that point it would be safe. That is just me. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, you'll meet on the Twitter Spaces side or leave a question in the comment box on YouTube. It's add John Reynott on both sides. So here's the young shot. It got blocked off of the faceoff win by Quinnipiac. Again, it was uh, Tellier with the latest goal. As it's 2-1 lead now for Minnesota, that was just cut off. So Bobcats, they get the goal that they need, and we're almost at the halfway point of the second frame. We'll be 30 minutes in. As it stands right now, it's 11.33 left to go in the second, and the Bobcats have just iced the puck. When we get back into the second intermission again, and we'll take you around the league one more time, I will type in the goals and some of the stats for the game story. Again, we'll have that at hopelessportsguide.wordpress.com alongside the play-by-play -play that you're hearing now. There's nothing in the commercial side of it. So Logan Cooley gets sent to take the draw, an offensive zone draw. It's Snuggerud and Nyes, the first line out there for Bob Metzko's squad as they have an offensive zone draw. Logan Cooley is one of the very best. I think he's going to be very good for Minnesota. He'll be a 
professional player for a long time. That's just the thoughts that I get. As this is picked up now near the red line, Rossinen has this knocked away as it will be sent in deep, but Quinnipiac ices it. They didn't gain the red line. So it'll be another draw up here in the offensive end. 11-18, the Quinnipiac can't change. So Bob Metzko, I know he's a really good coach. He's been there a long time for Minnesota, but for Quinnipiac, I believe it's been 29 years for Graham Pecknold, and he's 56. Again, the math doesn't sound all that in particular on that side, but it's the truth. He had the coaching job at a young age. He's been there for a long time. He spent some time with the USA Development Program as well. Had some time in the World Juniors. And uh, I was a pretty cool on that side, to be honest with you, because, you know, Quinnipiac, when they started, they weren't even a D1 program. This is sent back down now. Minnesota will try to transition from right to left. That's where they are in the second period. This is in the white shirts with the maroon pants and the gold piping on their jerseys with the gold helmets. So nice trying to bother Metza to get a breakout. Now near the left side, here come the Quinnipiac Bobcats as this goes off the stick shaft of close and the rebound will be safely collected out of Minnesota. Get through the backhand a couple of times. Great work on the defensive end that allow Minnesota to gain some offensive zone time possession, but it was brushed off quickly by Quinnipiac as he really get a stick on it, does Metza. And now quickly the other way, Quinlan from a graph pass, and he got bodied off by three different hits. He just got pinballed around like a top as this is now in the neutral zone. Graf trying to find some puck possession as this gets recollected. And this is a nice drop pass off the set. Could be a wide open opportunity. And what a stop by Perez. He was in the middle of the circles. He was beaten in the middle of the circles, and Hugland could not lift it. That was a fantastic save by Yana Peretz and shows you why he is one of the best goaltenders, possibly the best goaltender in the nation over the last two seasons. Admittedly, it was a fortunate sauce pass that went in between the circles, but Peretz met the shot in the middle of the circles. That's how far he was out as he closed it out. So this is collected now. And a delayed offside, no penalty hand, delayed offside in the air as Minnesota gets a chance to pick this back up. 9.40 left to go in the second. What a sparkling stop that was by Peretz as Johnson will send this down in for the other end. It's Ryan Johnson and Brock Faber on the first line defense, and this will go back to them now. Faber will send this across here for Johnson as he gains the red line, flips it in. This goes in between the legs of one of the defense here. Graf was... Stuck in his own end, trying to play 200 foot game as this is a passing through the Frozen Four logo and across the Quinnipiac side. But this gets recollected now by Minnesota. Safely play this one D to D. Johnson to Favor. Favor's got it now as he wants to put this into the forward side. And now near the blue line side, it'll be collected by Lee. Jaden Lee's got it here for Quinnipiac. It's a 2 1 lead now. It was Christophe Tellier with the latest here for the Bobcats as they got the goal that they badly needed in the second to get within one. Again, Minnesota has never lost a game this season when trailing, when leading into the second period, I should say. When leading in the second period, they haven't lost. And they're up by one right now. If they're up by two, you'd have to feel pretty good on that side if you're the Gophers. As this is recollected in behind the office of Yana Peretz, about 8.25 left to go in the second as we had a momentary freeze of the feed on ESPN2, but we should be okay here. As this tries to get picked up here by Lombardi, he was stuck in his own end. Minnesota was hounding. They get the steal, and their pass from Cooley. This one will go back into the neutral zone. Can't be held in across that blue line. And now Matthew Nice, as this gets sent in, Jackson Lacombe will send this across. Lacombe gets it back now. We'll shoot this into the traffic. It's stopped by the left pad of Peretz. As we're down to eight minutes left to go in the second. This has been a tense but very fun contest between two exceptionally good college hockey teams. And again, probably even a lot of pros that you will see here eventually. A tripping call against the Gophers. This will put Quinnipiac on their first power play of the game. And we'll see who this is going to be on. I believe it's going to be Jimmy Snuggerud. So can the Bobcats take advantage of this? And tie the game at dose. That's the question. Snuggerud, he got his stick blade in there. No question about it. It was an easy call. 
And when we come back, Quinnipiac's got a chance to tie this game at two. You inspired Alexis Diaz to be well, more gay. So thank you. We hope you like your work. Some techniques are for their games. Some are clever. But all striving here are delicious stuff. There is a feeling, a mantra, a bump. Go ahead, sit in person. I don't know what to do. You just believe in stuff. The subway food. Try Subway's tasted menu upgrade yet. Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Go to inventhelp.com now and get free information on how to get started today. InventHelp provides invention services to help everyday inventors get started with their idea. We have representatives nationwide who explain the InventHelp process step by step. Over 10,000 patents have been secured through InventHelp's patent referral services. Our services include professional materials needed to showcase your invention and 3D animation and prototype modeling to help you demonstrate your idea. Get down to the details of your idea with a technical drawing. The InventHelp data bank includes thousands of companies who have agreed to review your ideas. We've been helping inventors since 1984. Let's help you next. Take advantage of the opportunity to get started today. Go to InventHelp.com for free information. Jimmy Suckeroo's that day was a all American go for former NHL player. He's in the box two minutes for tripping. Great chance for Quinnipiac to feel good. Boy, Nikki's feeling good. Wow. Keep <laughs> <laughs> focused. She would not be. Keep focused on the game. <laughs> so we'll get back set up here on this power play. So Quinnipiac has it now. Lipkin sends us across. They have a chance to. Tie this game at 2. 7.30 left to go in the seconds. Their first main advantage of the game. And this pass, it just gets mishandled and sent back down the ice. So it's recollected now. Lipkin, he's going to look to break this out left to right as this is sent back down. Quinnipiac needs to get another goal to get this one tied. They feel a whole lot better going into that third period tied at 2 rather than being down against Minnesota with the pressure they can bring. And now Luff has it as this is picked up. Now on the high slot, this will be sent back down across Metsa, and the shot goes wide and across the right side boards. This will get recollected, although it's one on three. Minnesota will take no chances as this will get picked in and cleared in deep. Quinnipiac now with a minute left to go on their first power play of the game, about 6.45 left to go in this middle frame. As they'll get in the entry right down the middle. That was a little bit too easy. Now near the right side of the dot, and the long flip is cleared all the way down. Fretz will slow it down with the goal stick, and that's a, it's a chance to hold it. 35 seconds up to go in Quinnipiac's power play. They've not gotten a shot yet. Even their entry had been difficult. Here's some of it down the middle again. Tellier, he's the one that had the first goal. Tellier's got it now as they'll try to work this in the high slot. Here's this pass here for Jaden Lee. As this gets set back up, this gets deflected wide, picked up across the blue paint on the high slot. Lee with his extra pass that goes off the outside of the post and picked up now by Minnesota, but it's settled down by Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac now racing. Here's Lee in the high slot. He lets it go. Here's a chance for Tellier. He tries to play this into the traffic as he picks it back up. Minnesota dodges the bullet. They get the kill, but this is still with the Bobcats. Now try to get centered out in front of the blue paint. As this is recollected, Jaden Lee, he gets the steal. Got it near the right dot. He'll fire it five-hole close as no. He makes the save and holds on with 5.34. So that one opportunity for Bobcats in off the end boards, Quinlan tries to send it across. We're going to see a shot that goes high. This bounces off a of close. Chesley was also there as well. Then it bounced high, goes around the crossbar, up out of the air, off the outside of the cage, and then near the left side of the red line. That's as close as it can get as uh, wife and daughter are looking there for Ram Pegmold squad. Six, five are the scoring chances now in favor of Quinnipiac. They scored the goal that has gotten them within one from Tellier as this is picked up in the high slot by the Golden Gophers. Here's the fake slapper. Settle it down now, Johnson. Johnson into the screen. His shot gets blocked. 
and he's going to have to retreat across the frozen floor logo. Johnson now settles it back down as Minnesota has possession. They'll play this across calmly as we've hit close to the five-minute marker of this middle stanza. It's a 2-1 lead for the Golden Gophers. This has been a fantastic game, and I don't think this is a game right now that uh, Michigan could have played because they got handled pretty cleanly here against Quinnipiac. Now the right side, there's a long shot. This goes wide of close, high off the right side in glass, where this gets recollected now by Faber. Faber's pass, picked off, and now Lipkin will recollect it in his own. And this Quinlan tries to get this in between the skates. One of the Minnesota players can't locate. This is an opportunity for the Bobcats now. And behind the officer close, it bounces up in the air, and they'll get a stoppage. Maybe this is played with a hand pass. Looks like we're going to a commercial break with 428. So a couple danger opportunities for Minnesota. Justin Close and company able to solve it. It got deflected in the air off of the skate right into the red basket. The catching glove of Close, he's got it. We go to break. So, C, again, I wish I could show the game on that side if I wasn't able to get uh, taken away on that, and I would. But uh, I would never be able to do any more broadcasts if I show the game and get shut down by uh, YouTube because they're always watching. So, unfortunately, I can only give you the radio play-by-play. -play. What, what you can do is if you want the clear audio, you can follow along at Twitter Spaces at John Reinot on the same name. Give me a follow on that side, and then you can uh, check someone else's uh, TV feed because <clears throat> I'm sure there's going to be college hockey TV feeds on the YouTube side. You can get my voice over alongside the TV feed, and then you're covered on both. So right now we are in a little bit of a break. Everybody's looking at the scoreboard. Here we go. We're going to get back into the action now. 428 left to go in the second. John, are you with you on the call? This is the national championship game between Quinnipiac and Minnesota. As this is now the left side of the red line. Minnesota wins a defensive zone draw. This gets tipped out of the air, and this will be a chance for Ram Pitlick. It's one on three. He fires it just wide and left of the crease. And this will be an opportunity off the keep-in here for Minnesota. As this is getting really worked over on the other end is the Golden Gopher. Picked up now by Johnson. They're trying to be recollected, but this goes across the blue line side. So the Devils, they do send Luke Hughes to an entry-level deal. He's the one that just left Michigan after losing the Quinnipiac. Here's Matza with a fire. And this one hits the netting. So Luke Hughes, he loses the Quinnipiac. He goes onto a plane by himself, supposedly, with all of his equipment in hand. And then he gets set to join the Devils with a four-year deal alongside Jack Hughes. Now all they have to do is get Quinn Hughes from Vancouver to come over. And all three brothers, two defenders and one wing can all play on the same line if they want to do that. So this will be a chance for Checklin Air on the third line to take the draw for Quinnipiac. As this is picked up off the draw, when Bobcats again, they've been to the national championship game, but they've never won a title. It's been a long time for Minnesota on that end since they've last won. Scholar Brendamore, he took the opening penalty, and he was the one that flipped it just wide. Again, that is the son of head coach Rod Brendamore, the former Philadelphia Flyer, but now the head coach of the Carolina Hurricanes, it's 14-11 shots on goal. This is a excruciatingly low total on that side. But again, even for Minnesota, as good as they are, that kind of gives you pause in the sense of when you think about as good as Quinnipiac is, here's another opportunity off a diving shot block. 
And then Jackson Lacombe might have saved a goal. But this kind of tells you how good Quinnipiac is because Minnesota is one of the best offensive talents that we have in the league as far as college hockey. As this gets sent back down, nice. And this is picked up by Peretz. Minnesota gets a shot on goal that's quickly off the one-time giving go from Chesley and Kurth. And it's saved by Yana. Two of 59 left to go in the second. It was Ethan DeYoung in a diving shot block. And that is why you wear that cage face mask. Got a piece of the face mask as well. And Minnesota able to protect Justin Close and get a shot block. As this is an offensive zone faceoff win that's brushed in deep by Minnesota. They send it in front of the blue paint and Peretz finds it. Makes the one-time save and holds on. 251 in the second. So Minnesota now, they get a couple of draw wins. They get a couple one tees on that side. And they get a chance to test Peretz a little bit. And some diving shot blocks, but it finds Peretz. Here's another bomb. And this one gets picked off by Michael Lombardi. And now Lombardi sends it down here for middle step. Middle step will get the clear as it's picked up now by Quinnipiac. They'll send this around the office. Peretz had a one to hold it as Friedman got his stick lifted. Now Jaden Lee can settle it back down here for the Bobcats. It's a 2-1 contest with 2.20 left to go in the second. John on here with you on the call. This has been a lot of fun in between these two teams. This is an exceptional collegiate hockey game, let alone a national championship game. I had a lot more fun on the Frozen Four side alongside with this championship. Immediately, I was a lot more nervous on that end too. But, man, this game is as good as it gets right now. This is picked up now off of a couple of skate blades, trying to get settled down into the neutral zone, but Quinnipiac given no quarter. They'll gain the entry now. Quinlan trying to make something happen, as this is found by Close, but there was redwood trees all over him. And 151, he goes out of the air and gets the stoppage. So they show the 2016 Frozen Four when it was Quinnipiac on the other end. Was that Thatcher Demko in that? Jesus, Quinnipiac beat Boston College, and then in the title game, they got destroyed, I believe, on that end. It was a 5-1 win by Minnesota. So this is a rematch from the 2016 on that side. So that's pretty cool to see that these two programs meet again. As this is picked up now behind their own end is Minnesota, but they got to be judicious about this and get it up quickly. This is glove. This is stayed in. And now here's a steal into the neutral zone. Can it lead in there two-on-one? This takes a fortunate bounce off of one of the Quinnipiac defenders. And Minnesota has to collect now in their own end. As they'll pick it up now off the wall, but not before it goes across the neutral zone. Minnesota has to find this in between a couple of skate blades. Put it back down now. Brett's will touch it with the goal stick as Metza will take a look again on the other end. It's Jake Johnson and Metza. Metza's got it now. There's a minute left to go here in this second period. It's a 2-1 lead for Minnesota. Christophe Tellier with the latest goal is Justin Close. We'll touch this with the goal stick. And I thought he would play it as it was cleared from 200 feet. This goes back to him, and he'll hold on to it. 52 seconds left as Bob Motzko looks on. You know he wanted to play that puck. He didn't want to see another draw. And if you're Minnesota, you cannot, cannot give up a goal here in the last 52 seconds to lead into the third period. Again, they've not lost a game when leading after two. The records are made to be broken. At least Quinnipiac's got within one. It's Skylar Brandon Moore against Logan Cooley. Can Cooley win it? And the whistle blows it dead. With 50 seconds left to go in the second, and we will do it again between Brandon Moore and Cooley. <clears throat> So let's try this one more time. I see Desi Berger now on the second one. I haven't seen a lot of that second one as much. So Logan Cooley will do it again. And we get yet another call. And that's not going to be happy there for Cooley because he just won two straight draws. You've got to do it again. So Quinnipiac got to feel pretty good about themselves. You get a third opportunity to win a defensive zone draw. As you see Rod Brandemore standing there. Cooley wins three straight draws. He does his job as this tried to get sticked out of the air, just whacked at and picked up now by Justin Close. 
And behind the office, the defense will help him out. Now near the left side, down. 35 seconds left to go in the second. As Brock Faber tries to do some contact, Ethan Dion trying to force a steal away from Jackson Lacombe. Now down to 30 seconds. This is a battle for the puck here. The right side, red line. Faber will get this across. And Faber and Colster, they're the ones out there right now. As Ethan DeYoung tries to pry it loose, this will go to the D side. And Rossinen will let this one go. This will go just high. This will be collected now by Minnesota. They have an opportunity to push up a one-on-one. -on -one. It's Matthew Nice. He gets canceled off the puck before it ever hit Peretz. Now down to five seconds. Can Quinnipiac make something happen? No, they can't. We are going to go to the third period. Minnesota, they've got the lead. Again, they haven't lost it this year since going into the third. That's when they normally lock it down. Minnesota up 2-1. It was Atelier's latest goal, but that's it and that's all. It's a 2-1 lead for Minnesota as we head into the third. Who's going to take this? Because whoever wins this claims the national title. And we will close out national championship week. We covered the NCAA Final Four. The NCAA Men's Championship and now the Frozen Four in the NCAA National Championship. And it's about 22 0 0 when leading after two periods. And they got a 2 1 lead. Come right back. We'll call the third. What did you make of their response overall in this period? I think Grand Factor and Steve settled down so much in that period. They started doing a great job blocking shots, getting their transition game going. That's been so solid all year long. And they've been able to get shots in on goal on Justin Gross, which has allowed them to get the goal. So these are your second period highlights. Out of the gate, Sophia had a chance to score. They had a great, great second period. They got to their game, like they're doing the saying. They outshot Minnesota 11 to 6. I thought they had the better of the clock possession. They were able to keep it in the zone, but for this goal, Jackson Nelson scores after a missed attempt from Brock Faber. And yeah, at this point, it just felt like fortune's favor Minnesota. Jackson Nelson's been a physical force on the ice all game. A couple big hits, but off the draw, watch what he does. He goes to the center of the ice and battles for position on his centerman. They stay with each other. Center defensively has to stay on center. And he's got to tie up that man pulling. But Nelson, the big body, 6'4", 225, very easy. This looks like a deliberate pass off the back of the boards there. But meanwhile, going to get them for the spot. And they do. What did you know from the goaltender in this play? Well, it, so this is Jack. This is Bolton. What? This is his puck. Anything through that blue paint. You see, he recognizes there's a backdoor option. He's going to turn his stick over. But he gets too flat. He could have just closed that off, squared up like we saw him do in the first period. Just take the Mets of play on as Kelly got too low. Big goal for Quinnipiac to get back into it a few minutes later. I thought it was a good game. Point streak in Minnesota with a chance here. And this is a power play opportunity later in the period for Quinnipiac. Yeah, they moved the puck around so well. Right back to the team of the power play has been great all year. Their puck movement is exceptional. They look for the flank and the quick shot. They're a good, good save by Colts in that situation. But the main advantage is going to be important. You see the referees swallow the whistles or they actually uh, call some penalties because both teams are going to show up. Right. So for Jackson Nelson, his 10th goal, second of the tournament, first off, so he's eighth, second of the tournament. Uh, so you guys were talking about Quinnipiac and, and their good response here in the second period. What do you think about what will happen in the third now? How do you think these two teams will come out of the game? I think Minnesota's got to continue to do what they've been doing. They can't take too many risky plays. They have to get the front line dumping in and try to create offense from uh, the poor check. And they, the two on ones and three on ones are not going to happen for them against this team. So hit the puck deep, make Quinnipiac go a full 200 feet to try to get an offense. And from Quinnipiac's point of view, that we said it before the game, if this is a one goal game, if this is a tie game at the end of 40, they're right where they want to be. So Quinnipiac's in the room saying, guys, we got them right where we want them, keep playing our game, we are going to get an opportunity. So we're going to hear from Quinnipiac goal scorer, which we are, that will be with us on Kelly A when we come back here on the National Championship. 40 minutes to the one. Ego, Milwaukee, Steel, all the top rated brands, all run on their own single battery system, and all come from one source your local lease. This is the place of the helpful hardware, folks. Historically, sauces are either sweet or spicy. 
but all these new king's Hawaiian chicken sandwich is both. Because Arby's makes both. History and sandwiches. Arby's, we have the meat. During the cheap celebration event, get 2.9% finance and 23 free cheap Grand Cherokee or Rail and Grand Cherokee 4 by e Visit cheap.com for new inventory available near you. Moderate to severe eczema still disrupts my skin. Despite treatment, it disrupts my skin with itch. It disrupts my skin with rash. But now, I can disrupt eczema with Rinvo. Rinvo is not steroid, topical, or injection. It's one pill once a day. Many taking Rinvo saw clear or almost clear skin, while some saw up to 100% clear skin. And they felt dramatic and fast itch relief, some as early as two days. That's Revoke Relief. Revoke can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB, serious infections of blood clots, some fatal, cancers, including lymphoma and skin cancer, death, heart attack, stroke, and tears in the stomach or intestines occur. People 50 and older with at least one heart disease risk factor have higher risks. Don't take it unless you're too involved, as serious reactions can occur. Tell your doctor if you are or may become pregnant. Disrupt the itch and rash of eczema. Talk to your doctor about Revoke. Learn how happy can help you stay. What's going on, Carlos? How are you doing? We're just getting stuff uh, typed in. It is a 2 1 lead for the Golden Gophers. So, mentally, just getting stuff typed in here is we're going to get set to go to the third period. It is a 2 1 lead for the Golden Gophers. It started out a 2 0. We'll just give you the complete reset here. So, in the first, about 20 seconds in, Scholar Brendamore, the uh, son of Rod Brendamore, we're going to legal check to the head. It was ruled to be incidental conduct. He only got two. He didn't get a five. It was only about eight shots on goal in the first period combined. But it was finished off by John Middlestead off a terrible giveaway from Quinnipiac defensive side. They flubbed the pass with nothing unbeknownst to them. So a 7-4 shot advantage for Minnesota. It was a 1-0 lead after one. <clears throat> In that second period, Minnesota made it 2 nothing. Off a chance from the point, it was Brock Favor let it go. It was tipped by Jackson Nelson. Again, I'll give you the marker of where that was. The timing wise, 424. The Brenda Moore penalty was 21 seconds in. And the middle stack goal in the first period was at 535. So 424, as you said, Minnesota makes a 2 0 off a chance in the point. It was favored tip by Nelson. And then Quinnipiac gets a deflection off Kelly and Metzo will just fire it from the right side dot off a severe angle. 
This goes off until he escaped in. It was not a kicking motion. It was a clean goal. There wasn't anything crazy about it. That was at 7-16 of the second. After that, it was just 1-1 one, one aside in the second. So Minnesota still holds a 2-1 lead after two periods. Minnesota's 22-0-0 when leading after two periods. So let's just be honest. If you're Quinnipiac, do you feel like, let's just do this too, it is 15, 13 shots on goal in favor of Quinnipiac. They outshot Minnesota 11-6 in that second period. But within a 2-1 scoreline, if you're the Bobcats, do you feel like you have the Golden Gophers right where you want them? That's the ultimate question mark. And it remains to be seen whether or not, because we haven't seen it yet this year. Will the Gophers, will they blow a lead in the third period, and will they make it interesting? Because this is a rematch from about – six years ago and that's when the quinnipiac bobcats they were the last in the national championship game as a team they've never won a title minnesota it's been a while on the other end but minnesota they've been shut down a little bit we saw this when we covered the game between the bobcats and the wolverines that the quinnipiac bobcats can put the pedal down and lock down we'll see if they can continue to do so against minnesota and if they can press because what happened in the Frozen Four game in between Boston College was they gave up seven penalties. There's only been two penalties in this game, one a side. But it was three power play goals for the Golden Gophers in that game against the Terriers. So we'll have to see what ends up happening. <clears throat> I'll be right back. What's worked all year and take this opportunity to win the next 20 minutes and win a national title. To me, the best teams are the ones that continue to do what they've always done, stay within their character for success. Stay in the moment, right? Yeah. Stay in the moment and play with courage and stay composed in the high pressure, chaotic moments of this third period. Stay within yourself and honestly, make a hard play all the time. It's a simple thing. It's cliche in hockey. They talk about all the time. But make the hard play. It's never a bad time. Never a bad play. This one was easy for John Middlestack in front of the net. He got the puck. The third period is next. The national champion will be crowned. <laughs> This telecast is copyrighted by the NCAA for the private use of our audience. Any of the use of this telecast or any picture descriptions or accounts of the game that the NCAA consent is prohibited. The top 18 in the country are here and are plenty of stars in the building. Yeah. 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 Begins April 17 on ESPN. Grand Motors have the heart of being fearless, determined, and bold. That's why it's time for you to be a man. Now with 0.9% financing for 60 months, get an average 12 ounces. Oh. Oh. Most it's been I know there's been a few people that have moved in and out, but you guys are really starting to vote yes. on this one. I appreciate it. I said, does Minnesota defeat Quinnipiac for the D1 title? It was uh, in favor of Quinnipiac, and now you guys are going the other way here. Minnesota, out of the nine votes, I believe they have seven out of nine, 78%. Say yes, 22% say no. Together. 
Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Go to inventhelp.com and get started today. We have representatives nationwide who will explain the InventHelp process step by step. Over 10,000 patents have been secured through InventHelp patent referral services. The InventHelp data bank includes thousands of companies who have agreed to review new ideas. We've been helping inventors since 1984. Let's help you next. Get started today. Go to InventHelp.com for free information. Why is everyone talking about navage and nasal irrigation? I am one who suffers from chronic sinus infection. You need to clean that crap out of your nose. Novage is simple. Your nose is the body's air filter, but it's not perfect. Novage is a drug-free way to help flush out allergens, mucus, and germs using powered suction. Join nearly 3 million Novage users so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthy. I love this thing. It's nice to breathe. Novage, clean nose, healthy life. Tension rising in Tampa. Start of third period. Away. Take smart to win a championship area. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to take at least one goal here for Quinnipiac to uh, tie this one up against Minnesota. They want to force extra time here. It's going to be sudden death overtime. Should we get to that point? We still have 20 minutes left to go in regulation. I know when we get to Monday, I will have the uh, game with Cooper Hopkins. That'll be uh, Flames and National Predators. That's going to be a lot of fun, but I'm looking forward to this ending here to close out what is an NCAA championship weekend. We covered the NCAA men's Final Four and the championship game, and we covered the Frozen Four and the championship game this week. So it's been a lot of college hockey, a lot of college basketball, and it might all come down to this. <clears throat> So here we go. Third period puck drop underway here. Quinnipiac needs one goal. They're only down 2-1. They gave Minnesota a perfect 22. 0-0 when leading after two periods. Could this change all that? Can Quinnipiac tie it up? Let's find out together. We're watching this on ESPN2. It is the national championship game between the Quinnipiac Bobcats and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. It all comes down to this. They're trying to get their sixth championship in program history, Minnesota. Their first since 2003. Quinnipiac's never won one as a program. Again, they haven't been a D1 program all that long either, even though Ram Peckmold's been there for 29 years, as this is picked up now. And this gives Johnson here for Quinnipiac to hold on to it, but this will be Bryce Brodzinski. Here's the entry off the back end. Here's a series of stick drags as this gets knocked away. And Quinnipiac will try to go right to left. They're in the black jerseys with the yellow piping. And the black pants on the other end, they kind of look like the Boston Bruins. And then the maroon tops for Minnesota with the white shirts. It's turned over near the right side, dot close. They will find it, and he makes the glove save with 18.46. Left to go in the third. Again, Joe and I are with you on Twitter Spaces and on the YouTube side in between this. And I enjoyed it. 22-0-0. Again, we look at it for, again for Bob Munsko's squad when leading after two periods. What can Minnesota do? Can they get one more? Is 2-1 enough to hold it here? Quinnipiac probably feels that they have this within striking distance. Again, you would when you're within one as this shot gets deflected over the glass. But, again, Minnesota is very capable of scoring a lot more goals. But Quinnipiac, they lead the nation at 1.50 goals against coming into this tournament. And Perez had 10 shutouts. He had 12 last year. He had a 9.33 save percentage of 9.50 last year. So Lombardi, Michael Lombardi, on the fourth line side for Rampack Mold as this is sent back around. This goes down low. Now we D to D. Here's a chance for Jaden Lee. And close. We'll swallow this up with the stomach and a hold on as Quinnipiac continues now to start to add on to that shot board. They're starting to get a little bit further ahead. They got six more opportunities than Minnesota does in the last. An official check that we had from the box side of it was 15-13 Quinnipiac. It's about 17-13 now from my unofficial count with 18-16 in the third. 
So face-off win by the Bobcats. Here's Jaden Lee. And this gets deflected. And this gets blocked off of one of the Golden Gophers before it ever hit close near the left side of the red line. But it's not out yet. Quinlan will be the first on the attack. This will go back in the high slot near the left side boards. And it gets deflected again. And behind the officer close, now under the left side red line. It's try to get collected now by Minnesota. This goes in between some skate blades and gets sent back down. Center ice. And this will be picked back up and flipped in from about 100 feet. That was an opportunity there for C.J. McGee. And now Lee has Quinnipiac taking their time. They're trying to play this game on their toes in the third period because they know what's left of them. If they do not get another goal, it's going to be all but over here. And Minnesota's going to get to celebrate for the first time since 2006. Minnesota doesn't need another goal, but they sure could use one to feel a little more comfortable in this game. As Yana Peretz, he's been tested a couple times, but not too much. The same thing for Jackson Close. It's been a relatively short. Low shot amount across both sides. Both of these teams have played good defensive detail. And what very well could be one of those ones is John Middlestad after a careless giveaway by Quinnipiac in the first. That might be the reason why there's none doing. And the reason why Minnesota has an extra goal when they probably shouldn't. So this is flip D to D. And collect now. As Minnesota gains the entry off the one on four a series of backhand moves. And I'll pick it up near the right side of the red line as one of the Gophers gets clenched. And the delayed penalty hand is in the air. It is a chance there for hooking. And we will get a chance to see who this is on. I'm going to flip this back up and see if this gets picked up. So Ram Pecknold not too happy about it. Golden Gophers is going to the power play. Interesting enough, as we talked about in the first couple periods, there was only one period, one penalty, I should say, in between both. And now it's finally the second against Quinnipiac. So Brenda Moore, out of the two penalties that have been taken, he's taken both. Because he had a chance to hook and hold. So let's see what happens here with Logan Cooley. We know he's the Arizona Coyotes product. Again, if Cooper Hopkins was with him, we could talk about the USA World Juniors against uh, Team Canada on that end. Logan Cooley was very noticeable alongside Jimmy Snuggery. So Quinnipiac killed 24 straight power plays. They're a perfect 10 for 10 in this NCAA tournament. They've got to be 11 for 11 right now. Minnesota gets another one here at this point, still with tons of time in the third. He's still got to feel like Quinnipiac would be in severe danger, as this is now a chance for Snugger as he rides that blue line. Cooley will settle it down. Cooley now gets this cross as it's picked back up to him. He'll send this back. Snugger and now a bomb! And this is solved by Fretz in the high slot. He'll hold on with 16.04. That was Jackson Lacombe. It was pretty casual on that DVD side. He got his spot. He looked. He eyed it up. He let it go. Peretz found it and made the save. And again, between the honor of Peretz, if there is anyone who can make a save with no traffic in front of him, it would be on a Peretz over the last two seasons combined by the 945 save percentage. 22 shutouts in two seasons. Here's Lacombe again. And that was a sacrificial block by Friedman. As he's on the kill. He clears it down. Justin Close will touch it with the goal stick and leave it for the defensive partner and Jackson Lacombe as they try to go left to right. In this third period, they are up by one as the Gophers are in their second power play of the game. And now it's stolen. They get some shorthanded time as it's picked up here by Close. He's got to make this pass. That was a little bit of a flipper there, but this might be a problem. Friedman couldn't get to it. He'll have to get back into his back skate as Michael Lombardi. Gives this one a look. He tries to get the steal, but Minnesota will throw a back pass. It was a good look there for Nyes. He'll settle it down as this goes back to D. And Bryce Brodzinski will play this one back across. But we'll be patient and wait. There's a big chance for Miller. Now in behind the backhand, Matthew Nyes. He's dangerous. He likes to be shifty back there in my the net. Bryce Brodzinski will settle it back down. He gets the pass now on the high slot. As he's working his way toward the right side, Dottie gets taken down. But no call on that side as we're still live. And now this is centered out in front of the left side faceoff dot. And this will be recollected by the Gophers. Can they hold this? Yes, they can. Now near the left side dot again. This will go on the high slot. Minnesota patient. Emily got a lot of shots on this power play. Far over the net gets taken away by Quinnipiac. And then a centering pass. And toward the left dot goes just wide. And right out of the box is Scarlett Brendamore. Instead, he's going to go ahead and take a change as Quinnipiac will make their wholesale moves. Maybe Minnesota can push this up the ice, but I think they got to be tired too. 
So they're uh, they've iced it. They got to come back on the ice, and uh, they can't make their change. 14-25 have to go in this third. So Middlestad with a move, and Yana Peretz was the one that knocked it away from Middlestad. So good look there as he knocked it away from Luke Middlestad. It was John Middlestad that scored the first goal here for Minnesota. Before it was a Jackson Nelson tally, and then Christophe Tellier for Quinnipiac. 11-10 block shots. Quinnipiac has the advantage on that side. Is Minnesota can't win the defensive zone draw. Now here's Medsa. He's taking a severe angle, riding that line, and he shoots it. And this will be solved by Close. This is near the left side now. Quinlan trying to find a piece of it as Quinnipiac will move this D to D. This will be fired. Bounced high off the end boards. And this will fall to Minnesota. That was very close for Mr. Justin Close as this is picked up by Bryce Brodzinski and then taken away. Quinnipiac with a 100-foot stretch pass. Sam Lipkin tried to be the first to get to it. As we're down to 13.50 left to go in this national championship. It's the Bobcats versus the Golden Gophers here. And the winner is going to win the title, bar none, as this will be iced against the Gophers. Again, they cannot change. And we may get a TV timeout. I see Pratt's going out to the goal crease to skate. Or maybe they're just going to wait to set up this offensive zone draw here for the Bobcats. This has been a damn good game across the board, ladies and gentlemen, in between block shots, in between uh, a small amount of chances, attention to detail. Again, I can't help but think about that John Middlestad takeaway that Minnesota was able to open the scoring with on the first. That could very well be the extra goal that Minnesota – would need that they really shouldn't have gotten, but good heads up play by there. It was just a poor giveaway by Quinnipiac. And sometimes it happens in games like these. So Christophe Tellier, as this will fall back to Jake Johnson, and now sent back in. And this will be blocked off of a Tellier opportunity. Johnson tries to find it as well for the Bobcats. And now they'll make a pass in tight looking for Tellier. But the Bobcats still have it now. Play it off the backhand. This is a great looking setup and a diving play by Minnesota, but the job's not done. Trying to find this in between the circles and picked up now by Christophe Filion. So Filion gets this now to Johnson. So the first line defense out with the third line forwards for Ram Pecknell's squad. Now near the right side, Dot, it's Cooley. Gets a chance he gets it away before his head gets taken off there. Now near the right side board, Snuggerud. He was fine, and after Nyes was getting worked over, now on the high slot lets the shot go. This gets blocked by the Bobcats before it ever hits Peretz. Down at 12.30. Here come the Bobcats in full flight as this bounces off Lombardi, going to let one go. Fourth line out there now for Rand Peckmull. The Mets I can't hold the blue line off. Let's send this back here for Lee. Lee now trying to gain the entry off the backhand as this gets corralled by the Golden Gophers. Play this off the embankment, and they'll get a pass now here for Nelson. Jackson Nelson has the tally that works as the go-ahead right now for Minnesota. Although Christophe Tellier with the latest, it's Nelson's that's given Minnesota a 2-1 lead. It's now 2 it's now two one. It was 2-0 when Nelson scored. 11.55 will be going with third. So Lombardi picks it up. He'll take his change. Shots on goal are now 20 to 14 as the Golden Gophers still out in front. We're getting dangerously close to the halfway marker of this third and final frame. Unless Quinnipiac can find another goal. If Minnesota gets one more, as I've talked about throughout this game, this could be over at this point. When it was 2-0, Quinnipiac got the much-needed answer. So Rassinen almost loses the puck on the third line defense. This is just brushed away into the neutral zone. Get a chance for Elvari Rassinen to pick it up again. He's still with the puck now. I'm on the defensive. Lorquist now toward the right side. Doc Close is trying to locate it. As this is in between a bunch of Gophers and Bobcats, now in the high slot, lets the shot go off the end of the backboards, and Quinnipiac holds it down. Rassin it again and through the traffic as they try to break it. But Quinnipiac loves the bank now off these goalies. You've seen it a couple times against Portillo a couple days ago, the Michigan goaltender. 10.55 left to go in the third. Snuggaroo will gain the red line. This goes high off the end glass and on play with 10.54. Minnesota up 2-1. Yet to have a goal in this third period. If Minnesota can hold this scoreline down, they win the national championship. They'll be their first since 2006. Quinnipiac has never won one.
appreciate you guys following along on the YouTube side. I'm just going to go ahead and revisit this question. I threw that out there. Thank you for the 11 votes on that side. I said, does Minnesota defeat Quinnipiac for the D1 title? 82% of you say yes. 18% of you say no. It's a 2-1 game. I saw that the Jets just defeated the Preds. That is not good news for the Flames. They need to be able to win this game to keep pace. Again, they pull even now in games played, but they will be ahead with the Flames. They've got to win this game tonight in regulation against the eliminated Vancouver Canucks. If they don't, that will put them in a world of hurt. At least the only good thing on the other end is Nashville did not pick up points, but Calgary knows what they must do. I said the same thing to Cooper Hopkins when we were doing a broadcast. You had three games left in the season. Calgary's got a win ball in regulation. I think they're going to get in. But if Winnipeg wins out, though, it's going to be enough. They have three more games left on the season. So does Calgary, and they'll have a two-point advantage. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are getting very close to crunch time here within this contest. It's been a lot of fun here, and we still have yet to determine who is really going to win this one as it's 10.54 left in this third. So just two shots in the last 11 minutes and 58 seconds. Here's a bounce out of the air, but this gets away before it hits close. And now Minnesota got to get this out of their own end. Here's Michael Lombardi trying to locate it here. 10.35 left to go in this third. Minnesota still up to one. Their latest goal from Jackson Nelson would be the go-ahead that they need. Although the latest goal in the game was from Christophe Tellier from Quinnipiac. It's a 5-1 lead on the shot board for Quinnipiac in this third. And there is some massive body contact. Just two power plays for Minnesota, just one for Quinnipiac. Nobody scored on that. Again, Quinnipiac has been absolutely perfect on the penalty kill in the tournament. They've stopped 11 on the last 11 as voted. It's a hand pass, and it's 10-12 up to go in this third. So anyone who joins me or listens to this late in between Twitter spaces and YouTube, again, I humbly appreciate it. This is the NCAA Men's Ice Hockey Championship on ESPN2, the Quinnipiac Bobcats and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. It is Ram Pegnold's squad versus Bob Motzko. And, man, Minnesota, they have looked good all year. Quinnipiac has done the same. When you have Yana Peretz and you have 22 shutouts, yes, I said 22 in the span of two seasons for that man, Nick, that can do a lot of damage and stop teams and get them frustrated. Minnesota is just that good. So Skylar Brendan Moore, he tried to knock this away from one of the Golden Gophers. And this gets picked up now across the neutral zone. Look at the 9.35 mark of the third. Quinnipiac needs one more to extend this game. No matter what, this is the last game of the season. A single elimination as this is picked up now. Near the right side of the wall. Quinnipiac able to keep this alive off the backhand. This bounces off a of Miller stick and sent back around the end boards now. But nobody's back there for Quinnipiac. They had to go ahead and make a change. Quickly skating the other way. Jackson Lee set up for Tellier. He was the goal scorer. And this is right into the stomach of Justin Close. He makes the save at the 9-11 marker. 2-1. Minnesota still in the lead. As we take another break, got to pay some bills. Monsters, the outlaws, you can't forget about the frogs. Sometimes, you just want to take care of yours. The subway seats, the greatest thing of all time. Do you have an invention idea but don't know what to do next? Go to inventhelp.com to get started today. 
We have representatives nationwide who will explain the InventHelp mm -hmm. process step by step. Over 10,000 patents have been secured through InventHelp patent referral services. The InventHelp data bank includes thousands of companies who have agreed to review new ideas. We've been helping inventors since 1984. Let's help you next. Get started today. Go to InventHelp.com for free information. Why is everyone talking about novage and nasal irrigation? I am on the suffers from chronic sinus infection. You need to clean that crap out of your nose. Novage is simple. Your nose is the body's air filter, but it's not perfect. Novage is a drug-free way to help flush out allergens, mucus, and germs using powered suction. Join nearly 3 million Novage users so you can breathe better, sleep deeper, snore less, and stay healthier. I love this thing. It's nice to breathe. Novage. Clean nose, healthy life. Bobcats got to find the time goal, Kobe. Yeah, they've been putting the pressure on. Jaden Lee with a couple of Richters that have found their way through. It's been the following punch convention. On top, they are going to continue to put punks and bodies at the death. He just jumped in close. That's that Christophe Tellier and the Bobcats bunch of number throughout this hunt. So we are going to get under nine minutes left to go in the third. Quinnipiac needs a goal. They're doing a good job in this third period. They're up 6-1 on the shot board. And this is a chance out in front that just goes away from the stick of Quinnipiac. It would have been an opportunity for close to have to make a very difficult save, but it just got brushed away at the last moment. 8.56. The Golden Gophers have iced it close. He tried to throw this back to Nelson and gave it right back to Quinlan. And a good stick. I think that was Brock Faber. That came all the way back to just knock it away at the last moment. What a defensive play. This is another offensive zone draw win for the Bobcats. As this is picked up now by Quinlan. Quinlan trying to do some work from a severe angle. Trying to get settled down by Quinnipiac, but nobody could pick up the rebound. And this gets deflected now. So Quinnipiac, like hyenas on raw hamburger meat right now, they've been all over this puck. Close will take no chances. 8.37 left to go in the third. They are really starting to pepper close here. You can sense the desperation. So Minnesota and Quinnipiac do not have a goal in this third period. Quinlan, he got hit by Nelson. He just got the paint cleared out. So close was able to make the save, and if the second rebound was there, this could have been a tie game. Here is a defensive zone faceoff when Minnesota gets this out. This could be a two-on-one. Snugger and off the pass, and it fires it high. This goes off the inboards now, and we'll see if the Bobcats can press, but I know that they're tired. They've been out there for a long time off of those faceoff wins. Chem Lair will send this back around the inboards now. We'll try to pick it up now. Christophe Tellier and Philion, the third lanes out there. And Justin Close makes the save and holds on with 808. It was just a glove hand in between the right side of the post. So this is an opportunity off the two on one. And if you had a chance to do it again, Jimmy Snugger already scored a million of those things in his career. Has just fired high from a coolie pass. 808 in the third. Minnesota up 2-1 again, 22-0-0 on the season. One leading going after two periods. Let's see if they can finish it off. Go 23-0-0. They do. They won this national championship. Another offensive zone draw win for Quinnipiac. Now Lee sends this across, and here comes the bomb, and this gets deflected and sent back there on the ice. It'll be a race for it. We'll see if we're the first to get it, as this was waved off. Minnesota. Able to cancel out that hybrid ice, and as Lee will make the drop pass here for Metza. Try to get this to see what happens here between Bob Metzko's squad and Ram Pecknell. This has been a fun contest. There's some good body contact. Good work there by Brodzinski to send this one back down. Again, Quinnipiac 33-4-3 in the ECAC. And in the Big Ten, that's where Minnesota plays. Trying to get a title there for the land of hockey in Minnesota, let alone Michigan on that side. But Minnesota is definitely king on that end. I will give them that marker. As this is picked up now by Justin Close. Quinnipiac trying to get their first title in history. Let's get off the steal. Trying to make something off the backhand, but it gets taken away. 
And Lombardi's one timer. This gets blocked before they ran close. Nelson got to get it out. As he gets punished by Lipkin, Quinlan keeps it in here for Quinnipiac. Johnson sends this around the end boards. As this is picked up by Brock Faber again. He admittedly stayed an extra year just to try to win a national championship with this program. And this is iced by Minnesota. I thought Brock Faber got a stick up in the face. It certainly looked like it live with one of the Quinnipiac players. So Lipkin tried to make something happen off the backhand. Good defense there by Faber again to make sure he's been everywhere right now. Try to make sure they can keep whatever they can in front of Justin Close and stop him to make a miraculous save, but that might come down to it now. So Bob Metzko is going to take a timeout. 6.43 left to go in the third. He's got to be seeing something that he doesn't like. And out the interim, I can just say this to you honestly, they may not shot 11-1 to 1 in this third period. So he's feeling that momentum surge and the, the water just pushing in that direction, almost attempting to drown the Gophers here, and you can't have that happen. <clears throat> so Jackson McComb will stay out on the ice, and maybe on the other end, uh, Coster or Faber as well. But these some of these block shots. Ethan DeYoung slapper hit him right in the face mask. And then they're showing Jackson Lacombe with his bombs. They're showing him with his block shots. He took one in the face off a one-timer. He's been everywhere right now. And thank goodness they wear those collegiate face masks. So this is going to come down to the wire. Minnesota's got five national titles. They're seeking the first since 2003. Quinnipiac, they've been here before, but they've never won one. Six 43 left to go in this national championship game. Quinnipiac needs a goal to extend the time. Nikki Pecknold looking around that is Van Pecknold's wife alongside the daughter on that side. As you got to be happy with what he has done with this program. Again, Quinnipiac didn't start it as a Division I program. Van Pecknold's been there for a staggering 29 years. I believe he's still only 56 years of age. Another offensive zone draw win. That's up. Now here's an opportunity as this will be a couple of spins. Try to get dropped off the one-timer. This gets bounced toward the left side. Doc Quinnipiac just trying to knock this thing out of the air. Minnesota has been stuck in their own end. They've been losing a lot of draws. Now here's a turnover by Johnson to Quinnipiac, and I'll send this around the end boards now as the Bobcats look to apply more pressure. Christophe Tellier had this knocked away from his thing. Jackson Lacombe still out there. Here's Johnson now. And this is a pass that almost went away from Ethan DeYoung. Picked up by Johnson now into the traffic. And this gets tipped just wide as we get six minutes left to go in this third. Brodzinski's pass picked off across the neutral zone. In some body contact, both teams are offsides. 5.45 in the middle of a change. Here's Sam Lipkin. Lipkin gets spun off the puck by Faber. Sends us around the inboards now. And this is a long flip down the ice. Did Minnesota ice it again? Yes, they did. Lawson and will get the hybrid touch. 5-38. Left to go in the third. Minnesota really nursing that one goal lead right now. Again, it's about 15 shots to one in this third period on goal. And that is not an exaggeration. Quinnipiac has been winning these offensive zone draws, pushing Minnesota to the brink. If it wasn't for Brock Faber right now and Brodzinski and some of the defensive efforts, this could be a 3-2 lead for Quinnipiac at least. But as it stands right now, it's 2-1 Golden Gophers. They're trying to get the first title since 2003. Quinnipiac looking for their first. Minnesota, five minutes and 20 seconds away from winning the title. It's a two-on-two. Cooley will shoot it, and this goes off the left pad of Peretz. Only the second save he's had to make. In this third period, it's been all on the other end for Justin Close. Here's a backhand and a stick lift there. Nicely as couple body contacts. They're letting the refs let them play. And here's a rush. It's a two on four. It's only two for Quinnipiac. Is Lee trying to find this in between the skates? They got to call a penalty. I don't know who it's going to be on, whether it's going to be offsetting. Minnesota probably can't believe it is there was some body contact in between Quinnipiac, in between Minnesota, just a heavy contact, and there was no way the refs could not call it. Two penalties aside, this one will go against Minnesota, 
in Quinnipiac, they've been desperately trying to turn on that faucet with all the strength that they could muster. And now maybe, just maybe, they have an opportunity to make this a 2-2 game as Lipkin got absolutely stuck in behind some sticks, some bodies, was tripped. The refs were forced to call it, and they've been small in the whistle pretty much the entire game. They go to commercial break. So it's going to be a Quinnipiac power play. The Quinnipiac power play when we come back from break. It's now 12 votes. I said, does Minnesota defeat Quinnipiac for the D1 hockey title? 83% of you now overwhelmingly say yes. I think it's 10 to 12, if I do the math correctly on that side. I said, how much time left in the period, says Blasey? It's about uh, four and a half minutes, and Quinnipiac is on the power play. They're down by a goal. It's 2-1 Minnesota. The refs were forced to call the penalty. There wasn't much time left, anything else to say. The whistles have been swollen pretty much. It's only 2-2 aside on the power plays. Nobody has scored just yet, but Quinnipiac is about to get their second one underway. <clears throat> so 452 officially left. Quinnipiac on the man advantage, their second of the game. Minnesota trying to get their first national title since 2003. Quinnipiac's never won one. So offensive zone draw here for Quinnipiac. They've been fantastic in this area right now. They are out shooting Minnesota, I believe, 16 to 2 in this third period alone. It's another win for Quinnipiac on the draw. This has been one-sided on that part. So Metza lets one go through the traffic, and this is just a wall of humanity by Minnesota, and they'll flip it down. So Quinnipiac, if they score here, and this is the best chance that they're going to get, again, they have a, a goalie pool opportunity if they want. They could honestly make this a six on four if Ram Pecknell had the uh, fortitude to do so, as this is picked up now by Quinnipiac near the right side of the red line. Minnesota trying to bother them as this goes in the high slot now, D to D. Here's a chance as it's cycled around. Mets up, fake the slapper. Here's the bomb from Graf. And saved by the left pad of Justin Close and flip down the ice. Yana Fretz. We'll take a look at it here for Zach Metza. We're down to 355 alongside of I know people were asking on the YouTube side to show the game. If I do that, I'd never be able to allow to do any of these other broadcasts because I love covering NBA and NHL and I'll be in college stuff with you. As this is flipped up, Metza gains the entry, gloved out of the air. This will go here for Polyon and picked up now by the Bobcats. Tellier sends this across, now toward the right side. Don Tellier gets it back. Quinnipiac second power play down at 38 seconds. They need a goal. They keep it alive. Close. Falls on it and makes the save. Chesley wanted to make sure that he was right there for his netminder to make sure nothing else happens. Now, if you're Minnesota, you have got to, got to win a defensive zone faceoff in your own end and clear this out. You're getting absolutely worked. On that end, as far as the draws, and Graf with the one-time bomb, that was a short side save that could have been destined for the left post, and just in close, canceled it. 3.28, left to go on the third. It is going to be a timeout now for Ram Pecknold's squad, as he wants to make sure that the first line is fresh. They know what they want to do off the draw win, maybe get a set design play. Your goals in this game... And I'll just give you a quick reset here. So it was John Middlestat off a careless giveaway in the first period. Again, that was 535. It was just flubbed by Quinnipiac. Nothing else left to say. Middlestad from Kerf. In the second period, it was Jackson Nelson off a deflection from Bach Faber. It was a 2 0 lead for Minnesota. Christophe Tellier. It was Zach Metza from a severe angle near the right side dot. Tellier able to kick it in. It wasn't a kicking motion. It just went off the skate and in. And it's still a 2-1 lead for the Golden Gophers over the Bobcats. But it's been about 17-2 on the shot board in this third period. Quinnipiac 
doing everything they can to push Minnesota to the brink. So Yanev Peretz, he's going. He's leaving right now. So it's a six on four. If Minnesota can win this and flip it down and put it in the empty net, they can win it. So this is the, the grandeur I was hoping Ryan Pecko would do. He did this last year going to the Frozen Four game against Michigan. Michigan won seven to four. He pulled the goalie with six minutes left. Now it's 328. Quinnipiac needs a goal to tie it. And they have a six on four man advantage for about 25 more seconds. Minnesota letting the clock tick away as this is kept in. And now just brushed aside with the stick. We're down to three minutes. Minnesota trying to get their first title in a long time. As this is picked up now, Quinnipiac does not have one in their program history. Graf, now we'll get it back near the right side. Down on fire! Scores! Quinnipiac ties it! 247 left! The extra man is the advantage that they need! 247 left, it's Graf and Quinnipiac, not dead yet. It'll be the first time, if this goes to OT, the first time this season, Minnesota was 22-0-0 when leading after two periods, and now they are in danger. It's a tie game. This goes through the five hole up close. Quinnipiac makes it count. And it's a 2-2 two, two tie. Man, am I glad that we covered this game. I know I was heartbroken the other day when Quinnipiac was able to take it away from Michigan. They dominated Colin Graf's 21st of the year. Here's Minnesota in the offensive end now. As this gets picked off, Quinnipiac has something here. Lombardi off a two-on-two. Two. This just gets flubbed. And now Jackson Lacombe. We'll pick it up. Jackson will call him off the pass. It gets knocked away from Johnson. The shot board reads 14 to 1. Quinnipiac in this third period. They've just tied it at two. Here's another chance, and this one's saved by Peretz. Just a second shot here for Minnesota. They got to hurry up and get back here, though. This is collected now by the Golden Gophers. Nice, Cooley, and Snuggaroo. That first line that's done all that damage is on the ice. And they need a goal. It's 2-2. Whoever gets this next one's likely going to win. If we get to OT, that will be the answer. I can't believe it, but Quinnipiac, essentially, they pushed Minnesota to the brink. They had a 6-on-4 off of the empty net pool. They ended up getting the goal. If that was Scholar Brendan Moore, he could turn himself from the GOAT to the GOAT. He was the one that got two penalties. But he is the one now that has the game tying goal for the Bobcats. Unbelievable. As this is picked up now, Brenda Moore with an opportunity now near the left side of the red line. Quinnipiac settles it down. Rassinen high off the left end boards. And now this still stays with Rassinen before Minnesota can get a piece of it. And now this will be sent in deep by Minnesota. With a buck 25 left to go in this third. Quinnipiac has just scored. Their only goal of the third period, and they had to have it. This national championship game may go to overtime in between Minnesota and Quinnipiac. It is a minute 13 left to go in this third. And again, I will reach out to Cooper Hopkins if he is available at all because I want to see if he wants to get into this overtime with me on the Twitter spaces side. I don't know if it's going to happen. I can't promise it, but I'll make sure I let him know. Tonight's attendance, 19,444. They show this is a neutral zone faceoff win by Quinnipiac, and they are very entertained in this game. Again, you'll be either under elation or completely heartbroken as it's exactly one minute left to go in regulation. It's a 2-2 tie. In between Quinnipiac and Minnesota, the winner gets the national championship for men, men's D1 ice hockey. Now an opportunity for Faber. Did he hold the blue line? Yes, he did. The Quinnipiac fans don't like it. But now they'll get a chance to collect in their own end. 14 shots to two in this period. But Quinnipiac does ice it. 
35 seconds left to go here in this third period. So Quinnipiac, he's got a little bit of a smile on his face as Christophe Tillier taking a look. The refs and everybody else going to get situated here in Minnesota. They've got schooled on the draws, especially in this third period. What an opportunity now to win an offensive zone draw, make something happen, survive the 22-0-0 when leading after two periods, not to go to OT, get a draw, get a chance, get something in this period. It's 15-5 on the draws for Quinnipiac. And they win it, but this falls to Minnesota, and then they flub on it off the D2D. And now Quinnipiac has it now. Lombardi flips it down the ice, as this is now the left side red line, recollected by the Gophers. Picked up now Cooley, tried to make something happen. Sam Lipkin, take a look. 15 seconds left to go. It's Lipkin, and this will bounce in toward the left side of the red line. Jacob Quinlan will clear it in. It's a 2-2 tie in this third period. Minnesota with their stretch pass. Doesn't matter. We're going to go to OT. It's a 2-2 tie between Quinnipiac Bobcats and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And the winner will claim the D1's Men's Ice Hockey Championship. This could not get any better. I hope you guys are enjoying this one on ESPN2. And if not, if you got friends that love hockey, call them. Let them know that this is on. This is going to be exciting. I'll finish it off when we get to OT. Domination. You felt like they were going to score a goal. And of course, who gets it? Colin Graff. The leading scorer all year, the most offensive player. He buried it. Tied up. Yeah, they, they dominated. They shot when you, Sorry, they outshot Minnesota 14 to 2 in that period. Minnesota, they sat back. And, and it's one thing to sit back for a few minutes, but to try and do it for 20 is a tall ask against a Quinnipiac team like this. Let's so, admittedly, I just sent a text to uh, Cooper Hopkins to see if he wants to join me for this OT. I'll do the best I can to try to get somebody else in here with me. No, I'll be calling this on my own. Not that I'm not capable of doing so, but we get a chance to cover a big-time moment. I'll sure make sure he's aware of it, see if he can join it. So I appreciate you guys following in between this uh, YouTube side and Twitter spaces at John Ryan Ott. Again, Minnesota, can they defeat Quinnipiac for the D1 hockey title? 16 votes, 75% say yes, 25% say no. I apologize that I can't show you the game. I understand I have a lot of stuff on the YouTube side, but if I did, that, that would cut off any other times I do uh, baseball, basketball, hockey, college affiliate coverage. I want to cover a lot of the stuff for the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's going to be wall to wall. And I don't want to get anything demonetized or anything else. Not that I ever would be, but I like covering these games and all that stuff with you guys. So we'll just have to stick with the play-by-play -play for now. But I will try to get Cooper Hopkins in here if he can. <clears throat> I'll be right back. This is Jackson Nelson. After a missed attempt from Rocky. Yeah, he's been a beast all game, using his huge frame, being physical. This time he uses that big long reach to get to the front of the net, chips it over to Yanni Perez. The favor with a smart shot here off the wall, looking for that redirect off the wall. That's a, that's a set play off the draw. They win the draw back to favor. He goes into the shot, takes off the wall. Yeah. Very creative, almost like a billiards pass. How about Zach Metz over the creative pass? Just not telling you. Minnesota unable to clear, able to keep it in right here. Metz, we talked about him being the captain, the leader. He comes down the wall, makes a great pass to tell you. Unfortunately for Minnesota, just the close, he can't cut that pass off early enough. But if he acts back in it, after that, Minnesota with a chance. A wide open net. Oh no! Yeah, Eric Dugan just set this over the net. I'm not sure if the puck just set up a touch on. Perez thought it would be the net. He was looking up to the sky. I couldn't believe it. But 
I'm able to convert. In the third, you're like Lombardi with a chance. Thank you. It was all wooded yak this third period. They were throwing everything at the net. They were all right, I'm just getting situated here for the OT. I've tried to request reinforcements. If not, it's going to be me finishing this off here for the rest of this and then the complete game story per usual before the Easter plans. Got a lot left to do, so I'm going to try to get that all done. Again, I was able to get this game and everything else taken care of, so that way uh, fiance and everything else does not yell at me. So I'm going to make sure I commit to the Sunday and then next Sunday on that side. So I'm going to pull this up here admittedly. It was. Did this not even update on Game HQ? Come on, boys. I know this is what they're using on that side. This is all the resource I can use here. So Colin Graff. Metza and Lipkin. success they have scored early. I think it's okay. going to be an early goal in the first five to ten minutes. If it goes longer, then it's going to be good. Yeah, they have to recruit too. And not just because of the goal, but the entire period. It's only after two shots on the goal and the offense that they have. They have to regroup and they have to start presenting a little bit of pressure on Quinnipiac instead of just sitting back and hoping that something breaks. They've got to really go for it, get out of the floor. So it's two to one. Minnesota was on path to winning. All of a sudden, the goaltender gets pulled. And then it's a tie game, and that's where we stand right now as we will go to overtime in moments. And here's the game time goal one more time. We'll be right back. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I had to charge it for. I was going to make it through the third period, but I'm not going to make it through the OT. So let's in the charge now, and we will get this underway here. So we'll just get you the third period reset. It was a 14 2 advantage for. Well, I got this one wrong, but Minnesota, but Quinnipiac, 14 2 for Quinnipiac, and the shots on goal. It seemed like the Golden Gophers were going to the defensive shell. The Bobcats elected for the extra attacker, and it was a tie game off the increased finish at 17-13 by Colin Graff. It was a period that was all Quinnipiac. Every single draw, and I'll just make sure in this marker too for the notes, so every single important draw, 
all run on their own single battery system, and all come from one source. Here are the legs. And then now, I'll just make this marker too, as this, I believe, has updated. The shots on goal are 29 to 15. Welcome to the next level. This is the Lexus NX. You can do it again. 29-15 for Quinnipiac as we go into this overtime. Again, we still have a few minutes left to do so on that. And I'm going to conserve the voice as much as possible that I can. But when we get into it, it'll be full throttle again. I'll just make this marker on Twitter and let everybody know, if they care at all, that this one is going into OT. <clears throat> It's Quinnipiac is ran back on. Monzo yeah. talked about it before the game when they talked to each other and, and what this would mean to him not having won twice already in the finals. Now it's overtime. It's so close they can taste it there in Quinnipiac. The first since 2011 and the 14th overtime in national championship history. One goal to settle it all. That's next. <laughs> Ego, Milwaukee, Steel, all the top rated brands, all run on their own single battery system, and all come from one source, your local ace. Ace is the place of the helpful hardware, folks. Welcome to the next level. This is the Lexus NX with intuitive tech. Watch for traffic. And our most advanced safety system ever. <laughs> There's always a first deal on the subway app, like this one. What's going on, Brandon? We're in the middle of the OT right now, so I'm just waiting for everything else to get settled and letting everybody know. Clear 
clear skin, about four months. And another study, for most people had 90% clearer skin. And even at 40 years, in Sky Rinsey, it's just four dresses a year after two star dresses. I see nothing in a different way. It's my moment, so I just gotta say. Nothing is everything. So we should only have a few more minutes before everything else gets started. I've been trying to tweet that out, send it out, let everybody know on that side, just to make sure. Sending this out as much as I can before we get started from this OT, just so that everybody knows if they want a chance to watch, listen to, whatever. <clears throat> so the players are coming out of the tunnel here, ladies and gentlemen. It is a 2 2 tie between the Quinnipiac Bobcats and the Minnesota Golden Gophers. This is it. Whoever gets the next goal wins the national championship. I appreciate you guys uh, following and listening along. And all of a sudden, we're getting a, a ton of people here. And I'm guessing that uh, not everybody expected this type of result. But I will say, if you Follow along a little bit into the Frozen Four. You know about Quinnipiac been able to lock down. And that is essentially what they did in the third period. It was a master class, a 16 to 2 shots on goal advantage against the Golden Gophers. And they have a chance to get their first national title in program history. I believe it's been since 2006 since the Golden Gophers have gotten it on that side. So it was the first time they were 22-0-0 when leading after two periods, but not anymore. So officially, we are in overtime. The puck off the faceoff win goes into the glass. It is a 2-2 tie. We'll give you a quick reset because I know there's a lot of people just jumping in here. It was John Middlestad from Connor Kurth in the first and then Jackson Nelson from Buck Faber in the second. 2 nothing late for Minnesota before two straight goals for Quinnipiac. Christophe Tellier and Zach Metza combined in the first goal in the second. There's a cross pass. Scores! Quinnipiac wins. Ten seconds in. I can't even give you the reset because it's over. Quinlan shoots the guns up in the air, throws the gloves off, and the Bobcats win the first title in school history. Ten seconds in. That's it, and that's all. Graham Pegnold celebrates. And the Bobcats have won the national title. It's a face-off win. It goes right back. It goes to Quinnipiac off the one-time finish. And Jacob Quinlan, he played hero in that first period against the Michigan Wolverines. And he plays hero now. Definitively, Quinnipiac wins the national title for the first time in program history and upsets the Golden Gophers. They were down 2 nothing. They win this game 3-2, to two, and they dominated, dominated that third period. 17-2 on the shot board, and Quinnipiac wins it. The first program title in program history. Holy cow. As Ram Pecknell now admittedly has tears in his eyes, and that was almost a disaster on my part. I'm trying to give you a reset within the first 10 seconds of this third period. And Quinnipiac says, we got no time for that. Let's finish it off right now and win it. And they do. I cannot believe it. But congratulations to one Griffin Cass. I try to tell everybody to watch this and get this on. I got it out in time, but I don't think everybody had a chance to race to their radios <laughs> Over the television as Quinnipiac wins it three to two. 
That was a freaking amazing, amazing national championship game. I'm so glad that we did this. So tomorrow I have Easter plans, but Monday I will be back with Cooper Hopkins. And I will say this, in between the way that the Canucks and Flames game is going, that might completely change some things, but we're still going to do that. So Ram Peckold is indeed in his 29th season as Quinnipiac head coach, his first national title. What a game this was, a 3 nothing comeback, the Bobcats. They took out Michigan, and now they took out Minnesota. The first national championship in program history. I will see you guys Monday night. Peace. The winning goal, you see the play happen, and Lipkin makes the pass to the front of the net. Willing, another one. What was going through your mind during that play on the bench? Uh, it's all Joe Dume. Joe, Joe Dume drew how that's his play, and it worked, and, and now we got an athlete. Well, congratulations, Coach. You're a national champion, Division One hockey coach. Now go celebrate with your team. All right, thank you. Great job, Colby. For all those Bobcat along with Devon Caves. Remember, Caves won a Stanley Cup in this building. Guys, that was absolutely incredible. I got to make sure that I sign off on the YouTube set. I can't believe it. It only took 10 seconds. <laughs> Quinnipiac, they win. They, they won the national title. They beat Minnesota, and they knocked off Michigan. I, I honestly, I, I can't believe it. I was in the middle of giving everybody a reset. Thank God I moved quick enough to be able to see that. I know where to, we would have missed it. But Quinnipiac, celebrate. They're going to celebrate in the night. Congratulations to all the Bobcat alums. Again, I'll make the shout-out to uh, Mr. Griffin Cass. I was happy to be able to work with him one time. I know he's a very young student there. So this is a pass, a sauce. Quinlan, he just picks it back up and scores. And Quinnipiac wins the game. Three to two is there are a lot of distraught Golden Gophers on the ice right now. Brock Faber admittedly said he came back in this year to try to win a title. And uh, Quinnipiac, boy, oh, boy, there is nothing you can say. Absolute domination of that third. Maybe Bob Motzko's squad, they try to bear down the hatches a little bit too early. But Quinnipiac, they kept smacking the door down until they broke the latch and did everything they needed. I will see you guys on Monday. Peace.